Good evening, family. You're watching Shirley's World. We have a state of emergency, a crisis that should not be taken lightly that is happening in America today. That's right, the coronavirus is not a joke. I don't know why comedians are joking about it. I don't know why people think it is, but it's a crisis. Today, me and Flagship is gonna go online and we're gonna talk about the coronavirus. Uh, if you're under a rock, you may not be aware, but there is a serious virus that is moving rapidly throughout the country, uh, the world. It started out of China and Wong China, a uh, Wong China, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, uh, but it is in China and it has quarantined cities. We're going to discuss the cities being quarantined and we're going to also uh, discuss the numbers. So I want to start off right now with a video that I want you to see which is going to shock you. This video is not that old. That This video just came out. And I want you to see what is going on. We need to get masks. We need to have alcohol and spray bottles. And I'm going to discuss how to make a, uh, your own Lysol. Because maybe Lysol might not be strong enough, but you need to prepare yourself. And you also need to have gloves. Again, this is a serious issue regarding the coronavirus. And African Americans are like in petri trays right now. We are in trouble with our people and our community that come back and visit family, but you know they're homeless and they're coming to visit you. And we need to get these people off the streets. I'm sorry. That should be our number one priority. Let's start off with this video. That's pretty eerie. The outbreak of the coronavirus in China has finally been declared a global health emergency after a rapid escalation in the number of infections during the past week. There are almost 8,000 cases in 18 countries, including nine in Australia. So here I am sitting at home and reporting from where I live. That's because after returning from Hubei province at the heart of the coronavirus outbreak, everybody's told you need to go into quarantine. You can't be exposed to others for several weeks. This city, Beijing, if I look out the window, it's dead. I mean, there are hardly any people in the streets. This video Friends just released. Here don't want to go outdoors. That's because they're afraid of catching the coronavirus. And the same is happening all over the country, all these mega cities in China. Dimitri, are you there? We got flagship on the line. Uh, I'm, I'm speechless right now. I didn't think it was, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, Shirley. I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but now I'm tripping. Uh, this man is not sleeping. He's dead. He's not Oh, sleeping. no. He's dead. Keep watching. I'm about to wash my hands one more time just because. He's getting videotaped. He's dead. He's dead. This is not a movie. This is not a, this is right now in the world today. This is not a movie. They are covering his body. He's dead. The government is taking drastic action to stem the coronavirus. Foreign nationals coming from China are now banned from entering the country. I think from a disease control point of view, we want to continue these for as long as is feasible. There's just so many major economic consequences of the travel ban that I think at some point we'll have to make the decision to um, lift the bans. But if we can keep them going as long as possible, that will be beneficial from a disease control. They're banning people from traveling. But I showed the other day where they got people who can fly out of other parts of the Asian community like Japan and China to Mexico. Mexico is not stopping them from flying here, but America is. But guess what? You can go from Mexico to America, right? But you can't go straight into America. Let's keep watching this video. Point of view. Hundreds of Australians remain trapped in Hubei province. So this is um, a view from my window and it's been really good weather today, but 
um, we're not going out. And this is our central garden at level six. So it's a bit shame that um, we're stuck at home. Otherwise, it could be a really good day out. I really just want a more firm answer from anywhere, really, from WHO or, or, or my local. So, Dimitri, I'm going to fast forward this story. This lady was there for their New Year's holiday or some event that they were having. She doesn't live in this part of China. And she said, I was told I should come on over. It, it was safe, but it's not safe. And the reason why it's not safe is because of what's going on with the virus. Dimitri, what are you thinking about all of this? I, I'm still my I, I mean, don't get it twisted. I have my my alcohol, my Lysol wipes, but I did not think it was this crazy. I mean, people dead in the streets. You said you, you, you told me before we come on the show that you're going to show me something else. I mean, this is no joke. But my concern is, is this my only concern is I haven't really heard that many black people get this. Is this kind of only for those? Is this is the strain kind of geared towards those who are Asian or well, without well, melanin or or what do you think on that? Because this could be a this could be uh, this could have been planted by by a uh, by a government as well. So. That's the part that I'm kind of concerned about. Well, the theory, the conspiracy theories are all out there for sure. But the reality right. is it has no favoritism. It likes black, white, Asian, Italian. It doesn't matter. A virus, a disease like the Black Plague, that plague is hitting everyone. And it started out of China. We're going to go back to the beginning. I'll, I'll at least play that much for you. My concern, and you'll see later on, is black people are sleeping on the streets of L.A. right now. We yes. know there's typhus, there's black plague in the sense of, of there were, they found some black plague, they found typhus, they found he hepatitis A. Um, they have no places to go to the bathroom. Uh, this is an airborne virus. So when yep. you guys are walking in the malls and you have them people that touch your hands, you're opening bathroom doors, uh, you're putting your PIN number to get your money out of the ATM machine, you're buying your groceries, you've got those people who touch everybody's bag, bags. This is a problem. This is a problem. This is serious. Serious I mean, problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I literally, what I did at home is I literally took everything, like all my clothes, uh, took out every book, wiped everything down, cleaned everything. <laughs> you know, even, um, even, yeah. even with your shoes. I mean, you just 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 have to be a little bit over precautious. But I wanted to get you to this point in the video. Let's keep going. Okay. They're spraying the streets now. These people are quarantined. They are not allowed so to walk the streets. We've been doing this all through the city regularly. It's the local council have been going out and spraying disinfectant around everybody's doorways. So I suspect they're spraying to stop infections coming out of the sewer. I better go in and shut the door. This is recent. This is not an old video. This video is I've just posted. Medical. This man is from Australia. His wife is from China. They told him he could leave at one point. And he said, no, I'm going to stay here with my wife. Now he's quarantined. He, and they've got several videos where people are live streaming saying, they will not let me out of my home. He's one of them. Folks turn up two doors away from me, 20 meters from my front door and take a lady away that was infected. Mm. They also took a son. The son um, returned home 24 hours later. He was okay. Uh, we haven't seen or heard of the lady since. So people have been concerned about the human rights aspects of quarantine and um, isolation of cases, quarantine of contacts, etc. And that, that's been happening on a very large scale in China, but also in Australia and other countries. Um, from a disease control point of view, um, putting aside other issues from a disease control point of view, it works. Okay, so let's stop right there. Do we, let me ask you, Dimitri, do you have the right um, as human rights to circumvent health issues, meaning that these people are mad because they're like, this is unhumane to lock us up in our homes and, and have us quarantine and not let us walk the streets. Um, who has more of the rights? The federal government or the governments of the people? Or in, the people? In, in this situation, when it comes to a, 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 a pandemic like this, absolutely for the greater good. But the thing is, it, obviously they're not, 
this there's a bigger issue at play. It's not the fact that they do not want to yield their rights in this single situation. It's the fact that they have no confidence in the institution. Mm. That's why they're challenging it. Because because if they had if they have full confidence in the institution, knowing that it's going to get better, they probably wouldn't have a problem with it. But right now, it just seems like people are dying. They don't know where it came from. They're telling you you can leave, you can't leave. It's chaos, and in chaos, people do not trust that. So I mean, I definitely believe in a case of uh, 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 something like this. Absolutely, if the government says stay in the house right now, so be it. In this case, in a case like this, but if I don't believe in the institution, I'm challenging it. I need to ask. I have some questions. So that's my thoughts. What do you think? I think you're right on point. I think the problem with America, or particularly California, you've got these liberal progressives who say you guys are over exaggerating, yada, yada, yada. But I saw videos before telling you that California has the highest level of Asian community and a lot of travel in and out of our national airport, our Bradley International Airport. So the rest of us are subject to. Let's keep watching this video. Okay. Okay, so this woman has the virus and she's kicking and screaming. Watch this video. Pay attention. Get the thumbs up, you guys, by the way. Please share this video. This video is to yeah, alert Thumbs up, you. thumbs up. Yeah, they're going to alert you of what they're going to do to you in your home. I don't know if this will happen in America, but this is what they're doing in China as we speak. <laughs> You see this Videos woman? emerge on social media of authorities using increasingly drastic measures. <laughs> you see that, Dimitri? Yep. They're just snatching folks. Yeah, just let's thing. go. Let's go. There's no medical anything, anything. There's no kind of shots they're given. They're just snatching you up and just saying, we're about to go burn you. Okay. You're going to die. Well, wherever the hell they're going. Get in there. Get in there. Damn. Around China, residents post scenes claiming officials are welding the doors of apartment buildings shut so what? people can't get out. Man, Chinese don't play. <laughs> Okay, I gotta stop this video. Jesus, wow. Was that deep? Hold on, can I say something real quick, Shirley? No, no, please. Okay, let me just give people the advice. Okay, so I'm reading off the CDC website. This is just a little side note of just basic information. If you got symptoms of coronavirus, it comes across that. It, it, it takes two to 14 days after exposure. And your symptoms will be fever, cough, shortness of breath, period. That's like the flu. So it's like you really don't know if it's flu or coronavirus, but this is what the CDC is saying. I'm not saying this. Shirley's not saying this. This is what the CDC is, uh, Center for Disease Control. In order to prevent coronavirus, it says avoid con- close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you're sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with the tissue. Then throw tissue in the trash and then clean and disinfect frequently. Uh, touch objects and surfaces, like Shirley said earlier, like doorknobs and stuff like that. Um, so that's just, that's pretty much what it says on the CDC website. And then last little piece, it says, if you are sick, uh, go go seek medical help immediately. Wear a face mask, uh, make sure you cover yourself, and then it's kind of repeating itself. But that's just a little, that's just basic information I just read from the CDC website so uh, everyone can prepare themselves. Unbelievable. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, what do you think about them welding these people inside of their homes, Dimitri? I'm sorry? I've never seen this in my entire life of living. I've never known that they know people are hurting and disease, and they're welding them. They're welding building them inside of the apartment complex. Hold on. Can, I, can we contact someone in the chat? Who is whoever Mark Allen is? If you have any 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 better information to go off of, then share it. I mean, the CDC, that's just what they're saying. So if you got something better to say, then you bring in your, your you bring in your receipts. But I'm not a doctor. I'm not a person that deals with infectious diseases. So if you got something else besides the CDC, Mark Allen, bring it in. This is mm. not about trying to check nobody or anything like that. Just bring in what bring in which what information you got, and we'll go from there. 
I'm sorry. What'd you say, Shirley? Well, no, you're, and you're right on point. Look, y'all. I'm looking at foreigners' news. I'm looking at, at uh, the I'm looking at uh, the news that comes from Great Britain. I'm looking at the news that comes from Canada and Australia because they're telling us, "Oh, you only have one or two people." Well, look, these people have gone to an epidemic where obviously people are dropping dead. Obviously, the hospitals go, are panicky, and you're getting welded into your apartment complex. How yep. you gonna get your food? How, how, yep. What happens if you're sick with something else? What if you have uh, what if you have medical needs that are not the coronavirus? It, it's too late. What if you forgot to go pick up your medicine because you're going to pick up the next day or go to the grocery store or something? Yep. It's a mess. It's a complete mess. I, I got another video I want to show you. I, I, I think the interesting part is that we need to at least wake up our people. And I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to wake us up and, and tell us what's going on. And a lot of us aren't waking up to that matter. And that's a problem. That really is the problem. Um, I mean, flagship, what's your taste on this take on this flagship? This is just, oh man. I just I just really hope that people it just seems like if you just keep yourself, you you reduce your risk based upon what I'm reading. Uh, if you just like take care of yourself, clean everything, uh, use gloves, use um masks, have your alcohol and your Lysol wipes together. <laughs> Now, um, someone in the chat say, uh, called Don't Snitch Media said 20 minutes ago, the first Australian dies from coronavirus. Mm. Wow. Then it says, but I think but I, but I think there have been people dying already, though, Shirley, because I think from the video, how long ago was this video? Um, this That video was not that long ago. Hold on. Um, that video was uh, February the 24th. It's got 2.9 million people. You guys, this is the video that we were watching. Let me show you this other live video right now. This is the breakout as we speak. There are uh, 87,000 people with the cases of it, almost 3,000 deaths. And we do have people recovering. We have 42,000 people recovering. But the death toll is still rising. Um, I've got this, this as well. This is the live stream call Corona Real Time Count Worldwide News. You can go there yourself. But yes, you can see China, mainland China, has the largest case. Uh, they have over 80,000 people. They are now welding people into their properties and their homes. The doctors are dying. Um, citizens are being quarantined. And, and even, uh, um, I think, ships and cruise ships are also being held back. Here's Korea. It has 3,500 cases, 17 deaths, 30 um, recovery. Italy has 1,100 cases. 29 deaths. It goes all the way down to America. Right now we have 69 people. I'm going to roll that up so you guys can see that. 69 people in America have coronavirus. One death, our first death was announced today or yesterday. And then we have seven people recovering. Uh, we go on. It's in Spain, different parts of Australia, Africa, the United Kingdom has 27 people have the virus. No deaths. Um, eight people are recovering. Uh, the death toll is being controlled on some other parts of the country. America has had their first death. Singapore has had no deaths. France have had two deaths. I mean, this is a serious issue, people. You need to and, watch these numbers. Go ahead, Dimitri. And then also um, T South said that Chinese people I know with relatives in China say our news are underreporting deaths by tens of thousands in China. And that makes sense because if you weld in people in the apartment complex, that means it must be, it's not because of just like one or two deaths. It must be tens of thousands, just like T South just said. So, right. um, so I think it's like, I, uh, so like you said, it is, this is a serious situation because they're underreporting it. And also Lisa Cabrera had, I don't know if you listen to her. She said that whatever number they're giving you out of China, you need to triple it. Damn. <laughs> because then wow. I, cause like, cause like T South said, you know, they're underreporting. So from what Lisa Cabrera was saying, what T South is saying, and then plus the, the receipts that you're showing via these videos, we're not getting the we're not getting the real numbers. I think they're they're underreported as well. Well, you know they're notorious for lying. Shit, they're notorious right. for lying. Let me see if I can. Get, I want to show you another part of the video. But so, then hold on. But then also, there's a person named what What up Trish? Hello says four of the people at Travis. I think she said Travis Air Force Base. I think she's talking about uh, had the virus, and they released the others. So I don't know if she's if that person's saying they released all of them or just re released the released everyone but the four. Mm. Yeah, because he see y'all. Hold on, your chat got right. Got are these like news reporters? Hold on, your your chat got the receipts up in here. People be just breaking it down. 
I love you guys. Thank you so much. Look, Your chat be telling protect. everything. We have to protect each other. My family, we come through. We've got to protect each other on Facebook, my, my political family, my YouTube family. We all family here. We want to keep America alive, honey. Keep it great again. The only way. Oh, wait, hold on. Trish said something else. Hold on. Trish is get. Hold on. Okay. Trish is the, is the, is the, is, the, is hello. What's up, Trish? This is the person who has, is like the reporter. It has all the receipts. She said, my neighbor is the one death in California. What? what? Did she Girl. get, hold on, Trish, did you get checked out? Did you, did you check yourself out? Are you okay? Because it's a neighbor, it's like next door, you know what I'm saying? So it says the four people in Travis are now at North Bay Hospital. Damn! She got all the information. North Bay Hospital. Hold on, let's look up that. Let's look that up. The only hospital here in Fairfield and Sui son, where is this? Fairfield. Let me look this Hold up. your thoughts. You look that up. I want to campaign. I'm gonna play a little bit more of the video. Then you come back and tell me what you found. Well, let's keep watching. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. Closed small communities in a very a small space compared to say a country. So obviously you can get more intense transmission once an outbreak starts. <laughs> Shocking news breaks that the man who had first warned of the outbreak has died of coronavirus. In China, censors are working overtime to contain an outpouring of anger and grief over the death of the doctor who blew the whistle on the coronavirus crisis. Li Wenliang died from the virus in a Wuhan hospital five weeks after being punished by authorities for warning others of a dangerous new virus. I want to go back. Do you see this man's got two masks on? I want you to see this. This man, hold on. Over the death of the oh. doctor. Okay, he's got two masks on. He's got that blue mask with the blue and the white on the inside, and then he has that 3M. See, that's the 3M right there. 3M mask. Uh, so note to self, note to self, this doctor's wearing two masks. You might want to think about that. That might be maybe four. See how far that mask goes down to the bottom of his neck? He still caught it. Wow, let's keep going. Who blew the whistle on the coronavirus crisis. Li Wenliang died from the virus in a Wuhan hospital five weeks after being punished by authorities for warning others of a dangerous new virus. Wow. All right, Shirley, I got some receipts. Go for it. Okay, so, uh, okay, yeah, so What Up Trish has got all the information. And okay, so I went on, I went online, and so there's a lot of articles from LA Times, but the one I have here is from Politico, and it talks about how uh, the hospital that Trish was talking about. There's not only uh, there's uh, there's over a dozen people exposed mm. with the coronavirus. This is according to Politico, and um, and yeah, so it's it's going down in Northern California. Dozens, but less than a hundred people were potentially exposed at the hospital. At the hospital, and Hud and Huddles Huddleston said so. Huddleston is the spokesperson for the hospital, and it says, but he added that it's a moving target because hospital officials keep identifying additional people monitored on camera who may have come near the patient. So one patient has infected others. Wow! And this hospital is like ten miles from Travis Air Force Base. So if this can if this got to some people at the Air Force Base and you know what I'm saying if they do some kind of operations or whatever this could be traveling as we speak. So this is this is for real. There was a, a huge outpouring of grief, anger, frustration uh, on Chinese social media, and not just from so-called netizens, you know, on Chinese style Reddit forums or something, but from the Supreme Court. Uh, of China, who put out a statement saying that, you know, these doctors were heroes, they should have been allowed to do their job. The public intellectuals and the public both realize that Dr. Li represents the conscience of China. He was suppressed from the beginning from telling the truth. He could have saved the livelihood of tens of thousands of people or thousands of people's lives. But all this was concealed due to the authority's suppression of free speech. The, the authority is suppression to free speech. The interesting part about China is that because they don't have free speech, uh, the real truths are not really being known, known to the world. Uh, but thank God for social media and for us being able to communicate uh, worldwide with each other to be able to get the news faster across the country. The truth of the matter is this particular doctor was trying to warn people. 
And the government came in and took him hostage and basically said, no, 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 we don't need you telling everybody this. And it just got out of control. And then everybody realized he was a whistleblower of this case that took place. It started um, in uh, December where they kind of knew a little bit before and they should have shut this city down. They said it really started to spread when the Chinese New Year, listen to me, was about to take place and they didn't shut the city down and they let these people fly to wherever they want and they spread it across the world. Wow. You know, that's 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 the crazy part of it. But I want you to see these hospitals and what they look the like in China. The satisfaction with the government by commemorating him. All these people are quarantined. They the kept him out. Which is a critical milestone, overtaking the numbers killed by SARS. What about these patients lying here? Many patients are lying on the ground. And we're full here. We're full here. Three bodies have been laying here all morning. They're dead. Some of them are dead. Nobody's coming to handle it. This is their hospitals, you guys. This is what they look like. Every, and remember, that's why they made that makeshift hospital so fast because it wasn't just this hospital that was full. They can't take any more patients, but it was probably all the hospitals in the city that couldn't that was already full. That's why they made that makeshift hospital so quickly. And that was about a couple of weeks ago. Yes. So they're definitely under reporting. After being conspicuously absent, President Xi emerges on state media to assert his authority. <laughs> so they're trying to keep people calm, but this is a serious matter. Nah, they ain't working, bro. <laughs> Um, and he's struggling to get it back. Now, if that goes on, uh, if they don't get on top of the virus, then that can really damage Xi's image, I think, even with all ordinary Chinese people. And that has pro potentially profound implications because two, three years down the track, when he's meant to be reappointed, maybe his enemies will use this against him. So the people directed this kind of dissatisfaction directly to Xi himself and the style of governance, which is, I believe, the most serious threat to Xi Jinping. This is because the foundation of his power is based largely on populism, and the loss of this populist foundation will... So populist foundation has basically allowed itself to be irresponsible to the world, irresponsible to other governing nations uh, surrounding it of how serious the severity of the coronavirus. But I wanna ask you, my family, I have a question for you. And you know, we're in this world where we're very PC, political conscious, pol politically correct, and politically sensitive, PS, PS. We're just like, you know, are you a racist? You're a bias, you're whatever. But these cultures of people that come to this country have now come with diseases. Are we going to still leave the borders open? Are we gonna still allow the planes and them to move into our communities? Are we gonna still allow this to, to make it seem like it's abnormal and that we, we, we can fix this and that other countries can suffer and it won't happen to us? When I've told you before, they're flying to one part of the world, but they're coming in on another. Dimitri, what do you think about that? Well, just once I was just reading something. Sorry about that. Here's the here's the thing. We're, this is not about to me anything but just safety for our country. And one of the things is you have to if you you cannot like I think it was you or someone else that said when you're on the airplane, you got to put your the oxygen mask on yourself first, then put it on someone else. That's the situation here. We got to put the oxygen mask and fix our country first before we can help anyone else. So Trump needs to sh shut the borders down. And someone in the chat was suggesting, I think, uh, what up, Trish Hello was saying that. Um, but the thing is, Congress won't allow that to happen. And but I don't give a damn about Congress. He needs to do. He needs to just. He needs to be that alpha dog that we voted for, and just say, "Hey, we shutting this border down until we find out what the heck is going on." 
And that's and I have no problem with that because I don't want any of my family members to die. And I don't want anyone family members on here to die. You know what I mean? We got to get this thing under control. Absolutely, because if if Congress and these elected officials are trying to make it seem like everything's normal, why don't they take their asses to China? Right now, I showed you another uh, article where they say you can fly uh, throughout China for a cup of coffee. People are not getting on planes. They can't get out. And if they do get out, uh, um, if they get in, they can't get out. A lot of these people are quarantined within their properties of where they're staying. So, uh, I mean, it, it's it's like an apocalypse, like there's something yep. we've never seen before. And this and, is like I told you, this video was not too long ago. Go ahead, Dimitri. And then also, like, for example, if, if just say, for example, if you're a person in the chat or even you, Shirley, if you're sick and you have to go to work, you're going to stay home and not go to work or you're going to not go to your friend's house, or your family's house because you're sick. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean you're being you know, anti anything. You just, you don't want to get anybody else sick. So that, so translating that to a macro sense, it's no problem. And it makes total sense to shut everything down. Um, everyone coming into this country until we figure out what the heck's going on. It doesn't make, it makes sense for that. So. I agree. Let's keep watching. Keep in the pocket. Australians still trapped in the coronavirus epicenter in China are tonight preparing for a second attempt at an evacuation flight to Darwin. There is a seat available for my partner Sean and myself on the next available flight out of Wuhan, which apparently is leaving at midnight tonight. Uh, we've got three or four hours to get to the airport. Uh, they've sent us sent us all our passes, etc., so we can get through the checkpoints. Well, this man was stuck in, in China and they wouldn't let him or his wife out. He was stuck. That's what he's talking about here. This man and his family and his and his his wife, they did get out and they had their children. What I find interesting about this video, you'll see uh, part of the time he has a mask on and the other part of the time they don't have a mask on for their children. Should we put masks on our children, Dimitri? Because Espe Yes, absolutely. Especially like now. And um, see, here's the see, here's the thing, especially with our people. The see, we wait until the storm is here, and we then try to fix the problem. <laughs> well, it's too late because the storm is already here. So, but I think that you know, with this show, I think I hope. I, well, I know everyone in the chat is already prepared. I know I'm prepared, but we definitely need to get this out to our people to really, truly. Um, get prepared, get our masks, get our kids popping, start educating ourselves, get as much information as possible. So therefore we can at least reduce the risk of getting infected. Because remember, it takes two weeks. It takes two weeks before well, you, no, before no, you know no, you actually have it. No, no, it was two weeks. They said 14 days. Now I've been here in 28 days. They oh. said, yes, that's the new report out there. Now they're saying that, you know, uh, 28 days and, and, and look, I mean, this is what they're doing. If they find out you have a fever, they literally grab you out of your apartment. They say, come on, you're coming right now. They're just taking people out, just randomly. Just Damn. Grab them. But see, here's the thing that that's the, the video is not showing. The video is not showing me what tools are they utilizing to, to say you have the virus or you don't have the virus. I mean, we see them strong arguing people out. But I wonder what is it, what are the testing tools? You see what I mean? They do have it. Let me see if I can find. They have those things where they put the uh, the temperature gauge to your hand. Have you seen those? You don't know what those look like. You're at the airport and mm -hmm. they basically they put this temperature gauge to your head and that mm -hmm. way they're able to tell if you have a fever. If you have a fever, they take the, they take your temperature and then they basically uh, say, OK, you've got a temperature. You have to go. They don't know if you have it or not, but you have a temperature. Oh, so that's so that's just the gauge. If you have a temperature. Right. Let's do. Damn. How the coronavirus outbreaks see that a global emergency. I'm sure. but, look, but, see, but look at how, but the thing is, another thing that we're seeing here is look at how gangster these Chinese people are. Woo! You see how they treat their own people? <laughs> so so if so if a Chinese person does something to black people, we can't say it's racist because make no mistake, they probably would do worse than their own people. So, <laughs> I mean, they're crazy. This is crazy. Right, that's, that's, that's why they're so rude to us, because they're so rude to each other themselves. Yep. But with the, you know you know when you get temperature they don't put the put the thermometer in your mouth anymore. They take this gauge. See that gauge right there? And you're walking through and they Oh, and okay. and they touch their top of their forehead. That's how they know. Cuz I I ran is they're also heavily heavily infected with this disease as well. With this virus. And see how they're spraying everywhere? And this man he he talks about again they're pulling people out 
of their homes. So we like we discussed is if we in America realize that our citizenship rights and our health are in danger because you're gonna have a group of people who say we don't need to be that extreme. Then there's gonna be another oh, group God. that says, no, we need to be this extreme and we need to shut down the border. Let's listen to this portion. Wuhan is where the hub of this all started in China. For those who don't know, Wuhan is a very beautiful, charming, and bustling city in central China. It sits on the banks of Yangtze River. It's a mega city. Wuhan is also home. Hold on, time out, time out, time out. Lucky Sport just said something. It says yes. Okay, talking about the, uh, the coronavirus, it says, yes, it can be dormant for 30 days, and those who get it twice have heart attacks? Wow. Well, I got to look that up. Whoa, I got to look that up. Wow. I'm sorry, Shirley, go ahead. People around the world come to Wuhan to study. Now, this is how the city would normally look like in Wuhan. We just watched a little video of showing you what happened now that the virus has taken place. They're quarantining people and they're welding them in their homes. I'm going to show you that section again. But I want you to tell you, I want you to see how this, how did this virus come about? Because it's still not clear. Exactly. And so, and so I want to kind of provide you a clarity of how this virus evolved to where it is, because that's not out there. I've heard people say, oh, it came from America. It's planted by Trump. All that kind of bullshit. No, 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 no. Let's hear from this article from ABC News and, and also from people from China telling you, how this virus evolved. It's right in the heart of the country, geographically, as well as economically. All these trains and planes are coming through. And to have the virus outbreak start there, it's almost like if you wanted to pick the worst place for it to break out in, that would be the place you'd release it. Now, there's that theory. There's that theory. If, if you had the worst place that you could plant this virus, Wuhan is like an international hub. People come here to become educated. There's scientists here. There's a lot of money circulating here. This is a, hard, a big part of the capitalist aspects of China. And now this man is saying, if you really want to hit some numbers, if you really want to get population control, wink, wink, excuse me, wink, wink, you're going to plant that virus over there. If you really want to hurt the global economy, wink, wink, you're going to drop this virus here. I'm just saying, let's keep watching. In early December, people in Wuhan begin falling ill with a mystery virus. Now, th this is in December last year. This is December, not I mean a year, two years ago. This is the December that we just had two, three months ago. This is just now. So there is a sense of calmness, which we all should do, and we should pray, and we should be careful, but we should not be sleeping at the wheel. This is why I want you to share this video. Please get the likes up. If the more likes we get up, the more you guys share on all the platforms, on your social media platforms, on different groups. It helps me if you share, 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 because with the conversation of having yourself welded into your own personal space, the conversation of how that culture is coming to California and to America, and they have a stacked and racked and living all on top of each other. And look at what has happened. It spread even further, uh, even more because we're living in a, a situation where we're stacking and racking people and we can't escape. You yep. can't escape. That's why you were said to Trish, right? Uh, uh, Dimitri flagship that, you know, Hey, did you get yourself checked out? If that's your neighbor, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I'm waiting for, and I'm waiting for uh, that person to respond back because, because everything, everything that uh, what's up on Trish said was verified in a couple of news articles I was reading. So, it sounds like this is like her. It sounds like the news article is about her and her 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 situation. <laughs> really so, but I'm listen, sorry. No, no, no. What you're saying is really deep. It's really, really, yeah. deep, really deep. Now, okay. I, now I wanted to give you guys. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to just talk because I when you, one thing that I want to bring context to just bring a little side note context to Wuhan and just where this place is in China. So it's in um uh, it's in eastern it's in um eastern China has 13 districts. 
has like around uh, 19 million people. 19 million people and they're, they're spread out between 13 different districts and the economy has uh, is around 200 uh, two point i'm sorry 230 billion dollars and it also Ooh. has 30 30 35 uh institutions of higher learning from technology of uh technology institutes 230 billion uh two uh 230 billion is their economy oh my god yeah, but uh, but it's not. But the number of people is 19 million spread out through 13 different districts, and that and um, 19 million people create uh, 230 billion dollars. This is all according to Wikipedia, and then also it has 35 mm. institutions institutes of higher learning. And as a matter of fact, my first I was going to study abroad to uh, when I was in college. I was going to study abroad to one of these universities, but I ended up not going because I was just like uh, I didn't want to go over there. So um, yeah, so it's it's a really great place to go study. Um, and plus, it's really cheap. If you, uh, it's really cheap to send your kids to to school, and plus, the schools are fantastic. So, just want to get that side information. All these trains and planes are coming through there, and to have the virus outbreak start there, it's almost like if you wanted to pick the worst place for it to break out in, that would be the place you'd release it. In early December, people in Wuhan begin falling ill with a mystery virus. The first infection was in Wuhan it started in early December, and I believe the first case in December the first. Um, when new infectious disease appears, it does take a little time to register on become aware that it's new. Um, so there were people presenting with a form of pneumonia. Local doctors suspect the virus originated in the city's seafood and wildlife market. It started in the city's seafood and wildlife environment. If you've watched my previous videos when I talk about the coronavirus, when I talk about the Chinese people, their culture of living and eating and habitation it's different than America. For example, they eat bats. Uh, they eat camel and cats and dogs. Uh. They eat animals that the Bible tells you you should not be eating these things. Porcupines. They eat um, uh, salamanders. What? So the meat you think tastes like chicken could easily be a salamander because when you see this stuff, it's sauced up. It's got batter all on it. And you go, oh, this tastes great. What you don't know is you may not be eating chicken. Let's keep playing. Okay, I'll say something afterwards. It's probably originated from bats because that's what the genetic data tell us. Uh, I'm going to play it again. What did she say the data tells us? Listen, listen. Bats. Bats. Local doctors suspect the virus originated in the city's seafood and wildlife market. So we think the virus probably originated from bats because that's what the genetic data tell us. But So she said the genetic data, that means that they've already diagnosed this virus, right? And they've broken it down to understand its, its form of its genetics, what it comprises of, what's in this virus that's so deadly <laughs> and so, so, so vital to the people. And it's bats. And, the, and, and this woman, uh, Professor Rihanna McIntyre, uh, you, uh, that's uh, University of New South Wales Kirby Institute. That's she's speaking from an Australian university, FYI, just to get, bring context to who this person is. Often there's an intermediary animal host. Uh, in this case, they think pangolins might be implicated. And uh, have you been, are you familiar with a pangolin? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that poor little animal? <laughs> He, they wander throughout the market when you're there. So imagine you like a cat or a dog, this animal carries diseases and things and he's wandering throughout their meat markets. Can you believe that? Yeah, and here's the thing. Now, Lucky Sport brought up something that you even talked about in one of your videos. There's a reason, like, like for example, when it comes to the food industry, there's a reason why you do not mix you know, chicken and beef and fish and you separate them, completely separate them because you can have cross-contamination. And one of the things that you talk about when you, when you walk the streets and there was no refrigeration or anything like that, 
is that when you have these cross contaminations, viruses and stuff like that can can be concocted just by not so, not uh, dividing things uh, appropriately. And you could read the book called the uh, oh goodness, what's that book called? But there was this book in the 1920s that talked about the meatpacking industry and how uh, and how people were just dying from all these different diseases and stuff like that because they did not you know sanitize and and make sure that they did that they kept certain meats away from each other. So. And this, and now we're seeing this with this, with this, uh, with this news article. So it's just crazy. They just, there's just no rules, no regulation, and and just, and and based upon how they're behaving, it could have just, you know, concocted out of just being nasty. To be honest with you, so. No, that's true. That's true. The live market. So we think the virus probably originated from bats because that's what the genetic data tell us. Yeah. Often there's an intermediary animal host. Uh, in this case, they think pangolins might be implicated, which are a mammal. And that intermediary animal host might have been at the markets. Uh, we, we don't think that it's from eating <laughs> those things specific like the gastrointestinal tract, but more from handling them. Mm the contaminated meat so uh somewhere in that market we believe there must have been um a contaminated animal <laughs> that infected the first cluster of humans well, what what you laughing at because people just don't because these people just don't understand you don't have to have a whole bunch of nasty fishes in order to get this going you can just have one like for example one bad apple spoils a bunch all you need is just one nasty animal where it's not supposed to be, and then you have a situation, and and, and it's and it's just it is it is just mind boggles me that somehow these are supposed to be you know how these news articles they keep saying that these are the good immigrants that come in the Asian ones, so these people are superior to us. Okay, whatever. Well, whatever. you know, an interesting part. Let's let's do. You know, I don't like arguing on hypothetics or, or giving a hypothetic notion, but who's to say this is even real? Because th there's this whole theories of population control and economic global control. Because what's going to do, what is going to happen to China, uh, This everything's backed up. The oil's backed up. Uh, yep. ship backed up. The stock yep. market is crashing. Uh, this could be a, a glorious time for America to be made great again, unfortunately. I'm going to be honest with you. And trying to reestablish a manufacturing industry within America. Isn't it ironic that President Trump went to India? India, who yep. is China, as far as distribution and growth. And uh, oh, where oh surely I got a whole list. I, that was gonna be the second. I had that whole writ thing written down because I'm going through news articles right now, and I was gonna have analyze analyze that. So I'm so glad that we're on the same page with that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I just find that all interesting because uh, I know India wants our business, Philippine Island wants our business, and actually we want our business. But if we do cut China off, we our people are so uh, papa, we're not gonna go back into the factories that easily. We have to still get certain things straightened out here. Those people are used to being within the factories. So it's really easy to make that transition from China to India and then renegotiate those terms. But needless to say, let's go back to the coronavirus. Hold on. In late December, as the number of cases increases, doctors in Wuhan begin sharing information in a private chat group. Well before any of us knew about the coronavirus there were people who tried to sound the alarm so there were a group of whistleblowers who heard that there was this virus cluster and they started speaking about it now in particular there was one doctor li wenliang he posted on a chat group with his former university classmates the people had been coming in with what he thought was the sars virus the SARS virus was another virus contracted and collaborated by eating animals that we weren't supposed to eat. And they shut that down pretty quickly. Uh, but this became something that they realized was worse than that. Seven SARS cases were confirmed in the Huanan seafood market. The main mode of transmission of the virus is droplet transmission at close range or contact with respiratory secretions of patients. This can cause a special pneumonia that is evidently contagious and capable of affecting multiple organ systems. It is also called SARS. The patients were isolated in the emergency department of a hospital. Everyone, please be careful. That's scary. SARS is back. The outbreak revived a spectre of SARS, another type of coronavirus 
which killed 774 people in 2002 and 2003. The reason why they would have been so concerned at the prospect is this was SARS, uh, was threefold. First of all, SARS was super infectious. Second, it had a relatively high mortality rate of 10%. And third, a large number of healthcare workers were actually died from SARS because of the complexity with stopping transmission. And I think that was the real concern. On the same day as Dr Lee's warning, the Wuhan Health Commission sends an urgent internal notice to hospitals on the treatment of pneumonia of unknown cause. Some medical institutions in our city have seen patients steadily with pneumonia of unknown cause. If you find patients with unexplained pneumonia, actively adjust the resources and treat them on the spot. The notice warns them to keep the outbreak quiet. Without authorization, no units or individuals shall release treatment-related information to the outside. This is my question. If they knew in December that this was a really serious issue within China, and they know that we are a global economy, they know that people fly in and out of the country, I, I, I don't understand the selfishness of this country to be so irresponsible uh, black ship, so irresponsible, um, Dimitri, to allow it to get to this point. Well, you see, well, back to what we said at the beginning, you see how they treat their own people. We don't matter. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not surprised about them. I'm more surprised on our end and on our how we didn't get on, get on point because we know how they're going to behave. They, do, they treat their own people this way. You see how crazy they are with themselves. I'm just pissed that on, on our end, with all this money we got for national security, we, can't get, we, we, we didn't figure this out and we well, didn't start preparing uh, uh, earlier. That's well, my frustration. I, I, well, I think my frustration still goes back to the original case of Trump running for office when he talked about shut the borders down. If yeah. he would have been a really strong advocate for what he originally came here for and said, look, this virus is a serious issue, stop the planes. They yep. would have ostracized him. And he's in the middle of an election, so he doesn't want to shift those numbers too dramatically and be that harsh. That's what I'm thinking. But I mean... Not but do you think that we'll be upset? Do you think that America will be upset if he did that, or will he look very? Will he look like a great well, leader now, doing it? Now, of course, no. They would have. They would have crowned him. I mean, you've only have one death right now. Twenty what? Uh, Sixty-seven cases. But I think it's the interesting fact that the Congress and all of them together have not come and said, "Look, we're just shutting this all down together." Anybody coming from China or any adjacent planes that was in China went to Europe, went to France went over to Mexico and then come to America. Mm -mm. All those kind of tie in lines. We can't allow those kind of people over here. But yep. China, who are knowing at that time, don't release information to the outside. That's crazy. Nope. That's crazy. Don't you? Uh, I have no doubt that local governments have reported the situation to the central government. So local governments were not accountable to the people at that time, but to the central government. They adopted the policy of concealing the truth from the public, but starting to control the epidemic internally. This contradiction prevented them from properly mobilizing to deal with the spread of the epidemic. The way and continue to share information. Be careful. The WeChat group of our class has been banned. The latest news is the coronavirus infection has been confirmed and virus classification is in progress. Please don't spread the word and ask your family and loved ones to take precautions. Do not go to what? the seafood market in the near future. Look, they knew where the breakout was. Please don't go to that market. They knew where the breakout started was that market. And they know people were still going there, but they said, please don't go there because they're saying people are still going there. And they said nothing. They said nothing. And, this is, and, it, and it actually started from the grassroots where people were saying this, and they still were trying to shut them down. This is crazy. They're yeah. crazy. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So when this group of uh, doctors, I think they were university classmates from Wuhan, began sharing the information they had about a strange new virus on this sort of joint WeChat group, um, uh, they were doing what you'd expect medical professionals to do, to try and sort of pull information and see what was actually happening. Uh, but of course, that's a kind of dangerous thing to do in China. 
I think there's little doubt uh, right now that local officials in Wuhan did withhold information. They've admitted as much. Uh, the doctors in Wuhan who were talking about it were explicitly wow. told to shut up. Told to shut up. Really? really? Colleagues are hauled in for questioning by Wuhan police. After investigation and verification by the public security organs, eight offenders have been summoned and handled according to law. The police will investigate and punish with zero tolerance those illegal acts that fabricate and spread rumors and disrupt social order. Dr. Lee he was disciplined by his own hospital. He was even picked up by the police and taken in and castigated and told not to spread rumours. This is what happens when you are saying things publicly that the Communist Party doesn't like. You're spreading rumours. Even if somebody is trying to tell the world about a potentially dangerous virus, the first instinct is to shut them up. Despite the risk of retribution, critics like Dr Wu Chung, who already lost university job for defying a ban by President Xi on teaching democracy, continue to speak out over the government's handling of the crisis. So here we have China. Obviously, they know what the problem is. The doctors are alerting them. Conversations are happening, but people still don't know. And so that is nope. how that virus commenced, through the meats, through the community. And they knew it was a problem, but they didn't say anything. I, I don't understand. What is the purpose of lying for something that now has become a global uh, uh, problem? Like now, Demetri, what's your well, take? Well, on on, okay, on this take, I might get I might get drugged to the chat room. But on this take, I think both sides are correct. I think on one on the grassroots level, uh, people were getting sick. They didn't maybe maybe didn't know what it was. But it does make sense as an average person. If I know I got sick from the seafood market, I'm gonna call Shirley, I'm gonna call my people up and be like, look, don't go here, I got sick, so on and so forth. And then Shamaka in the corner and Tyrell and his three kids got sick too. That makes sense, passing that around the community. Then at the same point in time, the government, if you don't have 100% of what's, of what's going on at that same junction, at that level, you just can't put information out there anyway. Now the question is, could you at least put a teaser out there? Could you at least, uh, expedite the investigation. Okay, I don't know if that would happen or not, but at the same point in time, as a government, as a body politic of you know Congress or Parliament or whatever they have, the Communist Party, you just can't you know just because you hear some things that are happening in a certain area, you just can't put it all out there until you fully know and understand what's being said. Because you because what if it was what if people were just getting sick and had food poisoning? You know what I mean? And you sitting there saying some kind of virus, then that would have caused a, a negative uh, backlash as well. But on the other hand, they also told them. Uh, we know where it's coming from. Couldn't they shut down that market? Couldn't they shut and quarantine now, that particular area? Now that, now that could have, yeah, absolutely, that could have happened. Absolutely, that should have happened. But at the same point in time, you know, you have to get your people in there. You have to find out what's going on. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, by January they should have been able to say something because this happened in December. That's when the first cases happened. Right. By January they should have been able to say something. But in the very beginning stages, I think both sides are right. You know. You got to kind of you can't put out there that there's people are getting sick and so on and so forth. But then at the same point in time, I got I'm telling my people I got sick and you need to not go there. But then at the same point on the government side, you just can't put information out there that you haven't verified and you can't stand behind either. So at that point in the very beginning, yes. But then, you know, in January, nah, they should have came out with something by then. Yeah, but now apparently if they catch you with that fever, they just pull you out of your place. I, this is crazy. They just pull you straight out. And then they and, turn, turn the cameras off. And also what's interesting is just the amount of people that are, just, you know, they're fighting back, kicking and screaming. Isn't this the land of Shaolin Kung Fu? Where are the roundhouse kicks? Where are the sword fighting? I mean, seriously. No, just I'm, sorry. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was bad. I'm sorry. So wrong. You're so wrong. Yeah, let's keep oh, yeah, going. But, but seriously, this is the place of Shaolin Kung Fu. This is the place of, 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 What's that place? The thing called all these different martial arts, and and no one's and they and they just doing kicking in the face. That's crazy. You didn't watch too many movies. Let's keep going. They ain't using no martial arts right here. 
And then also, where's the treatment? They don't have no, sh they, they can't give you like a, a shot or something. I mean, what are they doing to treat these people? They just sitting them in the, in a room just to die. People, what, yeah. what is going on here? Let me go look up what they're trying to, how they treat these people. Let me go online. Let me see. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I want to get to the welding part. Like I told you at the beginning of this video, there are welding people into their apartment. So listen, listen. Around China, residents post scenes claiming officials are welding the doors of apartment buildings shut so people can't get out. Hey, that's the door. Hey, look, 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 look the, the door. They're welding the door. That's the door in the middle. Look. Terrible. Look, look, they're welding these people in. They're locking that knock and they're welding these people. They are not letting you out of the video. I mean, out of the video, out of the building. This video is less than five days old. Now they're just letting people die. Right here. He's showing another one. I'm very concerned about getting this virus. I'm not even 100 meters away from one of the hospitals. It's full. I've seen people entering that hospital. I've seen people getting rolled out on stretchers out of that hospital. They did. It's literally across the road from where I come out of my apartment. Now, that's concerning. My hospitals here are full. Uh, we run out of medical supplies here. There's no um, PPE or personal protective equipment available anymore. So the doctors are all gone to the bigger hospitals. They're shipping our sick and our, um, you know, the people that are in bad condition, they're taking them to Wuhan. The Wuhan hospitals are also full now. <laughs> By early February, the virus is in 25 countries, with 216 cases outside China. The most likely way that the virus is traveling outside of China is by infected people. So these people, they are perhaps in the early stages of the disease and perhaps not showing uh, very many clinical signs. So they are uh, able to uh, get onto planes and they're quite happy to travel. Uh, and in all innocence, they are spreading uh, the, the, the disease as they travel. Okay, uh, Shirley? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so, th so they're saying the treatment for coronavirus is, uh, and they being, uh, this is on uh, Medicine Plus, which is uh, ran by the United States uh, National Library of Medicine. Um, I mean, this is where pretty much all the medical schools pretty much get their books and stuff from and all the, the actual data. So um, this is like the, the cornerstone of uh, information for the medical community. Uh, and they're saying that taking over-the-counter medicines for pain, fever, and cough, however, do not give aspirin to children and do not give cough medicine to children under four. And then it also says using a room humidifier or taking hot showers can ease a sore throat and cough and getting plenty of rest and drinking fluids. So wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. This, this is the same treatment for if you get the flu. Right. So, but child, please. Not, people are found dropped dead. Look at that man dead right there on the hospital floor. They can't even tend to him. Okay, dead. so let's also, okay, we have to ask the question. Is the, the, the people that die every year from the flu is the same as those who are dying from the coronavirus? No, it's two different okay. types of viruses, but it has the same similar uh, traits as a, of a flu, but it's much, much worse. As you I already know, it's much, much worse. Uh, but, the, but, but the way that it sounds of treatment would be like a flu, but that's not how they're treating it. They do have some type of cure. I don't know what it is. I would not found that video. But they definitely have something that's out there to uh, wrap up, you know, deal with the cases with this going on right now. I'm trying to find that first video where I showed you that man dead on the ground. So this co this company called Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, pretty much it seems as though they have a leg up on uh, getting to a treatment or a cure. Because the thing is, is that if you're te if this is supposed to be some kind of pandemic, and after all the million, and this is why I was kind of frustrated when I. A little bit earlier because out of all this money that we spend for the cdc and doctors and medical coverage and we have the best healthcare coverage in the world i'm sorry something that gives you flu-like symptoms 
that we deal with every day and Bobby just has like an extra tougher strain. I'm sorry, in a month and some millions of dollars, we should be able to solve this. I'm sorry. Don't tell me to get some over-the-counter medicines for something like the coronavirus. Where's all that tax dollars that we spend? Where are the, where are the psycho crazy scientists that have been reading books and been locked in cages reading books so they can be solving these problems? I mean, someone got to get this, get it together. That's all I'm saying. No, and you're absolutely right. They definitely should get it together. And I think America say, hey, we are getting together. We're keeping everything calm. But look, you, you, you got to cut these borders. You got to close the borders. You cannot allow these people to continue to fly over here. You can't. I mean, look, mm -hmm. this man is dead in the middle of the street, in the middle of the street, and, 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 and nobody's tending to him. Look, he's dead. He perfectly laid down, and he's dead. Nobody's going towards him. They're going like, is he dead? We don't know. I mean, is this what California's going to consist of? That's all I want to know. Because this is how it's, it's starting in China. Man, Dimitri, I mean, this is a lot going on. What's the chat room talking about? Um, Just one second. I, I, I had to leave the chat room because I'm researching this company called uh, Regeneron, who uh, has all these kind of injectables, one of which is called um, uh, Arcalist. And it's an injection that deals with uh, cold autoimmune, uh, uh, autoinflammatory syndrome. Yeah, so they, they they deal with they pretty much deal with uh, injectable. Uh, they deal with they they, they they prescribe medicines for uh, that are injectable that deal with anything from cold to psoriasis to uh, strokes and things of that nature. So apparently, from the article that I'm reading, um, they're the ones who are kind of ahead, or or for what so what they say. But who knows? You know that that's a far cry from what I'm reading on the CDC saying. You know, you you need to just go ahead. And also the, the library website saying you, oh, just take some over-the-counter medicines. So I don't know what's going on. Mm. Uh, I love what uh what Candy said. Candy said China won't release uh, or share information. You know, you know they got some more information. They ain't there, they're not um letting us know. They're not telling us. Hey, you guys, I put it in the thread. If you guys want to come and talk with me and Dimitri, you're more than welcome to, but we're gonna keep going. I mean, I I, I don't understand why these people are allowed in this country. And yet they won't, they're adhering and holding information from us. They're holding information okay. from us. And we need to know what this thing is really doing. We need to really know the real numbers. And so whatever they're saying, I, you know, they're lying and they ain't telling us the real numbers. That shit is scary. It's scary. Yep. Okay. What's up, Trish? Hello, Colin. Like, I want, I just want whoever this person is to kind of break down everything because everything that this person said has been verified. I've been finding it online. So whoever, what up, Trish? And then also uh, T West, wait, no, not T West, um, T South. T South said something interesting. Oh, there's a case, uh, a Cameroonian student is on the way to full recovery from the coronavirus as the rest of the world is grappling with the virus. And, oh. and that's what I was asking you earlier. I mean, how many, no, I don't want to go there. Now I'm going to stop that. <laughs> what, what? Cause no, you, no, 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 because you, you didn't like it the last time I asked you, so I ain't going to say nothing. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I want you to I speak your piece. Go ahead. Well, no, that's what I'm just saying. I mean, is are these people? Are there any black? Are black people dying on, at a massive scale of this because of this, or no? No, there's only been one death case, and we don't know if they're African American or not. There's only been one death case, but this is what I have a question on. If we talk about a petri dish, a petri dish, a petri dish is for those who don't know. Let me show you. Because many of you guys don't understand what I'm saying with this. I'm going with this. Well, I got I got to show it to you. Okay, this is a petri dish. This right here. This is a petri dish where they have all these germs and everything congregated to be able to test viruses and diseases and and uh, germs and molds and funguses. Okay, they they do these these dishes so that they can find cures to the problems. But I want you to notice in this dish. They are all congregated together. That's why they said on the cruise ship. That's why they said how the that that the um, people live together. They're all congregated in one spot. I want you to see how California has become. I've showed this video before, but I got to show it to you again. This is California right now, where you have people downtown LA. They don't have any oh, medical. So bad down there. This is how they're living right now. And I taped this two years ago. It is tripled. Okay. This is not China. This is the United States of America. Now, all you need is one good cough, one good cough, 
And these people, some of these people do work jobs. I interviewed a girl right now who works for Starbucks and she's living homeless downtown LA. I don't know if I want to show that video again because I don't want to see the sister unemployed. But, you know, you can always start looking at people's nail beds to see if they're how clean they really are or if they're taking proper, proper precautions when it comes to their health. So, Dimitri, I have a question. Are people in America, particularly African American, who's 80% downtown LA right now, are they being are they being used as an example for world population in a petri dish that we see downtown? Because they have allowed these people to live like this for a couple of decades, or maybe a decade or, or five or ten years to this magnitude. Well, uh, also, well, also you gotta keep in mind that this is also doing from the the leftist liberal uh uh, organization called uh, the California State Assembly and State Senate to where cool. they allowed people in public housing to be put on the street and then they let anybody and everybody else uh, that comes here from other countries to go into public housing. So what this is, this is just a transference. Of, this is a society telling uh, the world exactly what's important. We don't care about you know Black people. We want anybody but us. And that's what this is an example of right here and that's why i keep and and oh and no side note south carolina uh joe biden just won the south carolina primary so in the midst of the person who is instrumental in this homelessness in the black community and also the crime bill we have these holy dancing uh the holy dancing speaking in tongue negroes putting their their oppressor voting for their oppressor in the Democratic primary. So to answer your question, I 100% agree. Yeah, it is. They're being put in a Petri desk. But then again, if they're, if, 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 if they're getting, if, let me say this, if the Democrats are getting off on making sure that we have nothing and that we keep voting for it, they think that, they, that we like it. So what are we supposed to do? You see what I mean? We keep allowing them to do this to us. And what are we supposed to do? I don't what? know what to do. Uh, you know, what What do we do? But uh, think of the fact that they keep electing these same cuckoo for Cocoa Pop people. And I, I think there's a generational gap of, of knowledge and um, responsibility. These church leaders, these activists, these old people from the 60s and the 50s who are so loyal to a party versus the principle. If we as American people cannot stay loyal to the principles of the Constitution and the fact that domestic tranquility is now jeopardized. We've allowed it to be jeopardized because we've allowed international uh, actions to compensate over us. And now we've put ourselves in a situation like Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't understand if people don't realize that if we're going to disband Americans and allow them to become homeless, and now they're in a Petri tray in a dish, and now they're being looked upon as something that is not human, subhuman. Oh, well, that's just a couple of black people. Oh, well. Those people can easily, one cough, you can take out two or 300 people in mm -hmm. a heartbeat. And then they're going to start quarantining cities. I, I predicted this many years ago, three or four years ago. I said, I feel in my spirit that, that we are going to be quarantined by cities. Now, I want to come from a spiritual perspective. So just deal with me and bear with me. By the way, get the thumbs up, people. We've got 82 people in the chat room. We've got some a lot of people on Facebook on different platforms. Thank you all so much for watching and sharing. I, I want you to be conscious of the fact by sharing this information, you build up conversation. By sharing this information, you aren't the only one staying awake to the subject matter. There's other people that are not looking at this from a safety point of view and just sharing this could save someone's life. Seriously, I'm seriously. When it comes to the mask, when it comes to the alcohol and the spray, these are serious matters that we're dealing with. We have to be careful that there are people who are traveling in from other countries. So yep. going back to domestic tranquility and talking about the um, Constitution, and we're talking about the preamble, why has America allowed itself to get so far off base from its origin of its rules and regulation? And now we have these other people who have come on board and they don't add any value. They None. don't add any value. I mean, what do you think about that flagship? None. Zero value, zero tangible, zero nothing. And literally, when you look at the appropriations bill every year, there's there's trillions from the federal government to state and local government that's set aside for people who are not even here in the country yet. So this is the, this is the frustration that I have. This is the frustration that this is the issue that we have. This is the reason why Trump was elected. But 
it just seems as though he's kind of abandoning these principles. And um, we need to get him back on track immediately. Oh, immediately. Because, because, uh, because the coronavirus, you know, it's not, um, it's not Lapita Umfumbe who's bringing that, <laughs> who's bringing this into the country. That's all I'm saying. See, so and, and right, and what you're really saying is not the people from Africa. You know, they they always coming after us, but it's not the people from Africa. Byron, I need you to go out and then try to come back in because your device is not connecting. So go out, Byron. Byron's getting ready to come in and give his opinion. Hey, you guys, if you want to come in, I'm going to put the link in at the bottom. Let's have a discussion and uh, let's let's discuss what do you think uh, your your insight on this subject matter. Uh, Byron's getting ready to come in and he's going to share his insight on the subject matter, uh, because this is a very serious issue, especially when they're starting to uh, weld people into their property. That, that kind of scared me. I'm sorry. I've never seen anything like that in my life where you're in an apartment complex, people are becoming contagious uh, and disease and are dying, and they're starting to put welding together and, and shutting the doors in. And that's a problem. That really is a problem. Um, you know, the interesting part, um, the health prime minister or one of the minister, one of the guys who are part of the health officials for Iran, he recently caught a cold or got sick. And he said he has the coronavirus. The Pope was sniffing. Did you see the Pope sniffing and coughing? Dimitri? Yeah. Yep. Uh, he, he's got the coronavirus. And you know that these people, they are always want to love and kiss and touch each other. Byron, are you they there? nasty. I think Byron still it's still trying to. But bring also up. let's but also let's look at this in another perspective. Just besides just the coronavirus, look at their response and how we also need to be very very careful and we need to look at these cultures and how they handle themselves in a, in a crisis situation and we need to translate that to how that how would that translate here in America? Look at what they're doing to their people in China. Do we want that energy over here? Do we really want that energy and that kind of behavior in this country? Yeah, but if what you do think Shirley something you're racist if you say something um you're being prejudiced you're discriminating all these things come into play and you're the evil one if you say something but by not saving saying something and not putting the principles of things that were placed by our founding fathers for our protection in place we are are disabling ourselves mm -hmm. I really so i really really believe we are disabling ourselves and uh, that's a problem. And if we're going to continue to allow this to happen, what good is that? That's why. And because mm -hmm. when I look at videos and when I look at pictures, not just what we see is what we don't see. Another thing I did not see is out of all those workers who are all, you know, that were covered and they had their mask on. Did you did you see them giving out any kind of like, you know, bleach wipes, Lysol pads or or, or anything like that? No. Or giving out any information or pamphlets on how to protect themselves? No. Again, I have told before, See? we need to have some alcohol. Yeah. We need to have, I put mine in a spray bottle. Now I've got just a cloth covered. This is not the proper gear. The proper gear I'm going to show you in a second. You can buy it online. Uh, that one doctor who died, he had two masks on and he still died. But, you know, again, you need to have alcohol. And there's different percentages. This one is 91%. And the other one, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to, I try to get 100%. That's kind of hard to find. But I just want to let you know, family, you need to find out. I got the 90, not 91%. The 100% you have to get from a chemical company. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. And then you also, you can get your own spray bottle and you can, uh, you can go ahead and, and add that together. But um, I put these together. I put my essential oils in here as well. I go ahead and put some peppermint oil and whatever in here that will make a world of difference. Um, yeah, it's 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 real. What we're seeing and what we're hearing, uh, it is real in this country. And also the Chinese the Chinese restaurant by my house, which is the, which has really good Chinese Chinese food. It's been closed for three days. What? Yep. It's been closed for three days, and they and their Chinese food is really good too. It's been closed for three days. You weren't eating bats and dogs and stuff like that. You sure you wasn't eating all that strange stuff? <laughs> oh snap! Oh man! Oh, Shirley, don't please don't put that in my head because I'm literally gonna go there and try to test it now. I'm just saying, all these foreigners doing weird stuff. Let me show you something else. Byron, keep coming in. I gotta go out, but Byron, keep coming in. I keep trying to come in. I gotta show you guys something. Okay, oh, also, these Shirley, are white. Um, Oh, sorry. Yes. No, you go, go ahead. ahead. I'll tell you afterwards. 
Okay, so what you see here, these are the white. I found some that said it's based in America. Now, how true that is, I don't know. But it said based <laughs> in America, so that you guys know, you can buy these um, um, on Amazon. These are the ones the doctors have. These are the ones that the doctors have. There's blue on the outside and white on the inside. Uh, you can also buy gloves. They have them pink. You saw some of the people wearing the pink ones. Uh, this one's got 250 of them for $349. Now, if that's a little steep for you, um, I do think you might want to stock up on these things. Uh, they are oh. these right here. These are $20, and you get... Um, it has a has a one star, uh, Shirley, on customer reviews. Oh, we don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll be looking at that stuff. Hold on, go back. It had a one star. <laughs> okay, this one here, what is it? It's got a. That's a what does this one have? I don't see any stars go up, on it. Go up. Wait, hold on. Wait, where is it? Is that on this one? They no, no not it. on that one. It was a uh, another one you showed. Oh, I know. I, I got away from it. I saw that too. Okay, it's cool, cool. Star. Here, here's like the pink one's got a one. Yeah. Okay, this, <laughs> this one here, this one here has uh four stars, almost one, two, three, four, five stars. Okay, okay it's got six cool. percent. Um, you get a hundred mask. Um, how much are these? I don't know how much they are. Uh, but they're ranging, you guys, from thirty to forty to twenty dollars. Um, you know, use wisdom and whatever you do. Use with oh, wait, hold on. Debbie B said the eyes have to be covered too. Eyes are warm, moist, and, and a great incubator for germs. Don't bother with a mask unless you cover your eyes too. Oh, dang. See, we can't, we can't even win there. You think you cover with the mask and you good, but no, nah, now we got to cover the eyes too. That makes sense. We always losing. That makes sense. That we makes just can't sense. win. Look, <laughs> look at this story here. The mother. There she is now. Hello, oh, mother. This man was stuck Thanks in, he was stuck time. there. So I'm going to show you, I was watching this video. He's going to show you how he prepared himself to leave the house. Mask, another mask. Apparently this mask actually doesn't do much, but two masks is always better than one. Hopefully nothing is getting in through my mask. Mm. I forget the most important thing. And the silliest thing. Oh, snap. Uh, oh, my God. What? Oh, wow. Got a big backpack. Got a big suitcase. Okay. Let's go to the shop. I don't expect to run into anyone today. I'm not going to touch them. With my hands, I'm just gonna knee it. Oh, it's gonna knee it, y'all. I love it. No one around. Another beautiful day in quarantine, Ruhan. It's so now, see, he's probably a student or someone who just graduated and just started working there. Right, you you are exactly right. Because don't don't get it twisted. Wuhan is if you want your kids to go to a good school, Wuhan, China is that place. They bout that life when it comes to great universities. Don't get it twisted. I almost went there. We are going to the shop. Don't need to look left and right. There's no cars. Hello. Uh, Shirley, could you get the uh, the comment? Right. Could you take the comment down for a second? Because I can't see the rest of the. Oh, let me do that real quick. Um, sorry, but I go out and go back in. Um, and T and T South, you the bomb. We got the comment. That's a good comment. And I and I actually want to comment on what she said earlier too. Um. Okay, is that better? Byron, no, the comment. The Byron, big comment. I know you want to come in. Your your phone ain't acting right. You got to go back out and come back in. So go back out and come back in. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the video. He is a student, by the way. I thought it was interesting. He put like double protection. Did you see that? Yep. Double protection. Okay, let's just like the doctor did. Yes, just like the doctor did. Okay, is that better? Just in case. Let's go. So this is Hong Kong Road. Usually a very, very busy road, but obviously not today. 
not for the foreseeable future. Great to bike though. One of the 6,000 taxis deployed. Would rather not get in it though. People took you in for the pharmacy. Where the hell is she going with that suitcase? You ain't leaving Wuhan? No, honey, she going to the grocery store. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is what they're doing. They're going to the grocery store. I got to backtrack. He just said, he just said, I, I'm not taking no taxi. Mm -mm, not taking no taxi. A uh, note to self, word on the street. And there's an article that came out. I posted on my Facebook page. Uh, they got bed bugs in the back of Ubers and Lyfts. Let that absorb into your system. They got bed bugs and, uh, and Ubers and Lyfts. Now, if this is the case. In the state of California, they allow you to sleep in your car. This is a side note. I'm going to go back to the story. So they allow you to sleep in your car, right? People get in that car, in and out, in and out. But people who are sleeping don't always go take baths. They go to the gym. They might go to the spa, whatever, and bathe. But they're sleeping. They're doing all kind of things, jacking off or whatever in the back of them cars. And they don't have plastic what? covers. They got those leather seats. They got those felt seats that we all sit on and they look clean. But you know what people do in the back of the cars? They sleeping. Men are lonely. They sleeping there by themselves. Now you do the math. So now they just announced that they got bed bugs in the back of Ubers and Lyfts and there's all kind of lawsuits. So this man saying, I'm not getting in the back of no, no Uber. I'm not getting the back of no taxi. See that taxi? But then, all, but then also, Shirley, the girl with the purple uh, suitcase, could she be trying to do a do a uh, do a fly around to get back to America or to a European country? Could she be one of those people, as you said earlier, trying to fly to a neighboring country and then try to you know back door into her home country? Oh, no, no, he just met with her. They're both walking to the market right now. Okay, but obviously not today. Not for the foreseeable future. Great to bike though. One of the six thousand taxis deployed. Would rather not get in it though. People took you in for the pharmacy. Maybe prescriptions. Well, the pharmacy still. This open. is a city with a population bigger than London. Oh. And it, Nineteen it, million people, thirteen districts. Say that again. Uh, Wuhan, China is on the eastern part of China and has 19 million people over 13 districts, 230 wow. billion economy. Wow. And, and it's a ghost town. This Go, is yep. a damn movie. Hey, if, if, if a filmmaker wants to make an apocalypse movie, this is the best time to do it because ain't nobody out on the streets. I'm just note to self. Anyway, let's keep going. I moved to China almost two years ago. I finished university and I was looking for work. I got an email saying, do you want to teach in China? And I was like, all right, I'll go teach in China. I teach English and psychology. The Christmas just gone was my second Christmas not at home in Ireland. New Year was probably more fun. It was just me and two other close friends. It was just such a fun night. We drank, we played games. It was just a really nice way to bring in the New Year. I remember virus rumors. I think it was the 31st of December. There was a fish market. People who worked at the fish market, they were all taken to a hospital. But my dad messaged me about it because he was reading the newspaper. He sent me a picture and it said SARS outbreak, something in China. And I was like, oh, I've heard of that. No need to worry. And then my mother messaged me seeing because she's hearing about it now in the news. And I'm like, don't worry, don't worry. No need to worry. It's nothing. Just okay, now let me stop you here. This is why we do these videos. This is exactly why I'm not going to be so caught up into uh, the federal government or global news to the extent that we are not connected to the ground. Okay? Yep. The ground people have to alert the other ground people. Now, his parents are saying, baby, you out there in China and Wuhan, there is a problem of a virus disease. Because this is like a plague, a black plague, okay? And they've, those people have never been quarantined within their homes. And your parents are telling you, you got red flags. We want you to come home. Oh, no, no, don't worry. This has never been, they've had SARS. We know that they have diseases. You know, he's taking it very light to matter. That's why even, even and Dimitri, you said before we started, what do you think that you've learned since we started this video? 
Re regarding um the the warning signs, yeah, the urgency of this. You said that you didn't think it was that bad. I I didn't I exactly I didn't think it was that bad at first until um uh, until I until you until you called me and started talking to me more about it and I started doing more research. I'm like, wait a minute, hold up, we need to get this thing together. But the thing is, to prevent it, it's really easy. That's why I listed those those things um be, uh, in the beginning from the CDC. Just make sure you got your bleach together, got your uh got your alcohol together, you wash your hands. Um, those are things that you could do around, make sure you clean your house. Those are things that the CDC is saying you could do right now to help pre pre uh, prevent and lower the risk of getting the coronavirus. And keep in mind, it can stay in your system from, uh, uh, before you start having symptoms, anywhere between 14 days to 30 days to have symptoms, before you can have symptoms for, uh, from it. So this is crazy. This is ridiculous. Just a little thing in a fish market. And look how wrong I was. It's just like a horror zombie movie. Where there's no one on the streets. It's so strange, so surreal. But that is something I never expected to see. Okay, the mask that he had before, that last picture, that's the mask that I just got, that I ordered, uh, that he had on his cell phone. I ordered that three days ago. So that's en route to me right now. I'm oh. wearing the, the big the big thing. Oh, how much was Let me show that again? See if I can find that. That's kind of interesting. So that, that particular mask, um, how much is that mask that you paid for? Um, I think I got it for fifty eight dollars. We well, got to wash it though, don't you? Uh, no, it comes with uh, it's one of those uh industrial. Oh goodness, what's those called? Hazmat, yeah, like that. The, but it's like an official hazmat. So that's the one you're gonna wear. Not, I mean, not that one particular, but like one that's for real, for real. I ain't playing around. Bump that. Mm, that's deep. That's very deep. Zombie movie. Where there's no one on the streets. It's so strange, so surreal. But that is something I never expected to see. The punishment for driving is a fine and potentially losing your license. So these people must have good reason to be driving. Oh. Oh. Where do you go? Little puppy. He's so cute, but we're not going to risk going near him. Oh. Well, that, was cute. that dog will be dead in a week. <laughs> you said that dog will be road. dead in a week. You're wrong. <laughs> we were worried, but it is open. All right, their markets are open. We have arrived. Careful. Empty shopping center. These are real videos, you guys. This man is in China right now. And uh, they still walk around with their masks. The supermarkets are full of stuff. Fruit and veg, all fresh stuff. All well stocked. Yeah, I love to see it. Don't even know what that is. Some oh. sort of, maybe a stingray? I don't know. Everyone's still buying. They're He's eating stingray. Come on now. Now, see, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. That's nasty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. See, we laugh, but these people eat some strange shit. And those people, those those animals carry certain diseases and viruses, and they don't work with our immune system. And now they're coming to America, and all we see is the meat part. We don't see the skin part. We see the flesh in raw form, and it's all that same kind of color as if it's chicken, just like snake looks like chicken. I'm just saying. Meat produce. Give that a miss for a while. He said, I'm going to give that a miss for a while. He says, I'm not eating any of their meat. He said, I'm, that's what I said. I'm not going to Chinatown. You'll call, I'm not a racist. I'm not going to Chinatown. I'm not eating Chinese food. I'm walking on the other side of the of the walkway because they are a very tight community. And they said that they live in tight quadrums of areas of China. And when they come to America, they're still a very tight community. True. And all of us who are around these people, they may be just as nice as whatever. So, oh, no, no, I don't have the disease. I just came back from China. They're not going to tell you they just came back from China. Uh, Dimitri, what are your thoughts on all of this? <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm just laughing because, I mean, you know how we go to these stores and they keep, you know, yelling at us, telling us to hurry up and buy. I'm just like, these people need to hurry up and die. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. And they are hurrying up and dying. I mean, since we've been talking, now the toll is up to 87.1 cases, uh, almost 3,000 deaths, and a total recovery of 42,000. Um, 166. And as you can see, China has the highest number, Korea, Italy, which is right next door. Uh, Iran was affected and others on that, that cruise ship. They put that cruise ship because those people were stuck on that ship and they wouldn't let them off. They kept all those people on there and they had six deaths and 10 recoveries, but uh, all those people on the cruise ship got infected. Again, these are small areas. You see that it says others, it says cruise ship. See that one right there? Type in. Right here, other cruise ship. It starts off, it says China, mainland China. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Korea, Italy, other in cruise ship, which is that cruise ship they held off uh, at the port. They wouldn't let them off the ship. Mm -hmm. Iran, uh, 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 um, Japan, Singapore. I mean, these are cases. So so I wonder, when it says recovery, how did they recover? What were, what were the circumstances that caused the recovery? That's I don't the know. question. It, does anybody know that in the chat room? Please let us know. And uh, if there's a video you want to let us know, what are the links? Uh, uh, some of you guys who are moderators, if you can let us know, I think that's a question we can maybe answer right now. Um, in other parts of the world, there's at least one or two people that are infected. See, all these people, all these countries you see with their flags, Israel, some of these are African country, Egypt, um, Switzerland, Australia, they have at least one to two people infected in the United Kingdom. Um, has uh, Great Britain has 23 people. Switzerland has 22 people infected. Um, these are people that went in and out of Wuhan, China from that one meat market. From that one meat market, it affected the world and its movement. I mean, not only is that shocking, um, it's, it's disheartening to know that they could have really stopped this, but they didn't. Byron, I know you were trying to get in. I would love to have you come in. Unfortunately, your, your dial didn't come in, so uh, if anybody, again, I'll put the link on the stream. If you have any insight that you'd like to come in and share with us on the chat, this is important. This is live. Again, I was showing you how people are being welded into their properties. They are not being allowed to come out of their properties. And that is a problem. That is a serious problem. Now, let's go back to the mask situation. I know we talk about these different types of masks. I want to show you, according to a doctor, the proper way to uh, wear this mask and to put it on. And that's important. It works. We have done many studies. <laughs> Believe me, it works. But several things. Number one, you must have the right protective equipment. The right mask. Now, this is the right mask. You see, it has a blue color on the outside because it's waterproof. Then you have a white on the inside, which is absorbent. Yeah. So if I cough, it absorbs it now. So you're going to wear it like this, the blue on the outside, the white on the inside. You have seen people wearing it like this. Mm. Totally wrong, you see? You see people have wearing masks, there's only one piece of paper. Those are not for infection control. You see this here, this tight little thick band here is to show you that you should put it on the top. Yep. Why? Because once you wear it, then you squeeze it so that it matches. You got to pinch the nose, yeah. You pinch the nose and then you pull it down. Very important because you don't want it to fall like this. If you see someone doing it, say, hey, please, you got to cover your nose. Have you seen doctors doing this? You know, talking. <laughs> T-South is killing me. <laughs> Listen to this. Because once you wear a mask, you should consider it dirty. Mm. Then when you remove, you don't touch it. You remove it such that, oh, everything's sorry, you remove it such yeah. that, it touches the oh, I'm so sorry. Hello, you Shirley? and drop it, yeah. and then do hand hygiene. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so Teeth South said, <laughs> how are they going to tell us to wear a mask when masks aren't saving them? Where are these, where are these masks coming from? <laughs> right? I mean, they have all this, they have all this uh, intellectualism on how to prevent the coronavirus, but they still dying of the coronavirus. They're still in quarantine and welding shut their citizens in their own apartment. Oh. I mean, that takes unlawful search and seizure to the next level. You can't even, you know what I'm saying? 
you're right. We won't come in, but you ain't coming out. You know, what I mean? so. it's crazy. Well, we saw also that they do have these masks made in America. So you guys might want to just seek out the ones made in America. If they're made in America, uh, find out for real. Thank you, Real Money. And I think someone else made a donation earlier. I don't know who that was. I appreciate all the donations. It makes a lot of sense. It helps me out. I would like to get enough donations. Um, I would like to go and pass out some masks downtown LA to the people. Uh, my family has put me on quarantine uh, on, on certain aspects of politics as well as uh, not going out on the streets. That means my son. It's funny how the parent becomes a child just for notes to self. Uh, and they'll say, nope, you are not doing that, mother. I mean, so they won't go with me. But yeah, you, you. I don't think you need to go down there right now either until we get some more information on how this thing is being spread because the fact they are tight quarters and it is worse than it was two years ago when you shot that video. And I don't think that you're going to have the right mask. I think, honestly, you need the mask that I got. Mm. And so because I because it, it just sounds there's something that we're not we're not being told right now. I do not believe based on the fact that China has made what was it? I think it was two or three makeshift hospitals. And then we just saw the video saying the hospitals were full. Then also, uh, what's up, Trish? Hello, Trish was talking about the Chinese, other Chinese hospitals that were all full. And so you ain't making makeshift hospitals unless you are completely overbooked. And in Wuhan, like I said, 19 million people, they got hospitals all up in and around that place, period. So the numbers are underinflated and there's something else we're not knowing about this. And there's, like you said, there's a reason why President Trump went to India and um, went to India and why they shut down all kind, all forms of, um, of trade from China right now. So there's, a re there's reasons why all this is happening. Okay, look at this mask. This is a mask that you can buy. It's $129. Um, but this one apparently... It's made in Italy and... Uh, what's the matter? What's wrong with Italy? Tell me, tell me, they bro. got because remember that remember the uh the Pope has coronavirus now. Remember you see the video? Yeah, that's true. Okay, this one's got almost five stars. Look at this one. This mask here. I don't think I don't, I don't think it's twenty three dollars. It doesn't have the price. Uh, I'm sure it's up there. Oh, here we are. It's one hundred and eighty nine dollars. Here's another has mask mask made by three M. Uh, yep. This is half mass max, so uh, as I can't even say it, but uh, as you can see, look, they're showing people with chemical. If you guys can see that, let me get over here. Um, yeah, these these are especially masks to stop the inhaling. Now, yeah, I have you, one of those, if that's when I got the, coming. If you if you see the police wearing this and they telling you to wear them paper ones, <laughs> you know, if you see police start walking down the street with this this garment right here. Uh, note to self, you better get online and start arguing your suits. They got the suits too. Here's the suits. Here's the hazmat suits that they have that you can have. And 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 I know some of you guys are saying you guys are extreme right now. You you really tripping, uh, honey? Safe than sorry. I'll still be alive. I did. We did see this man. I think he had this mask right here on top of the vapor mask. And this one is eighteen dollars. He says I don't know if it makes a difference, but. He wore two masks. The other doctor who wore two masks and he died. We saw that man. He had two masks on and he died. So, you know, I, I think that's the interesting part of this whole thing. But I want to go back to talk about small quarters. I'm, I'm going to do a side note that you guys may not know. They are already right now for the homeless people. They're making pods to put people in to sleep in. Look at this video. This is now how you all are going to sleep. Are you freaking crazy? These are designed to be made freestanding, and then they're going to be like all on top of each other. So it's like a bunk bed, but then you're, you're basically concealed inside these bunk beds. There's your bed, and that's all the space that you're going to get. That's all the space that you're going to get. And all that bed bug. And all those bed bugs and all those diseases are spreading all through those pods. These are pods that they're going to put human people in. And these people walk up and down the streets of America. This is astro. I, I'm, I'm literally livid right now looking at this video.
And I don't know how your chat room is not on fire looking at this. I don't know how anyone else who got kids, who you're teaching your kids to do their homework and get prepared and study economics and study your history and study and study uh, philosophy, critical thinking, and to think that these people think that it's completely appropriate to ruin the economy, bail out these bankers, and then when we are in hard times, we get a bunk bed with a whole bunch of dirty people? Nah, we ain't rolling like that. Nah, uh-uh, nah. Oh, it's uh -uh. And you know, a lot of people... <laughs> it's in that confirmation email. Come on. The idea is like a coffee shop or your local neighborhood bar, but for beds. All right, so you can choose your pod. You can go number four, number six, number seven. Oh, oh no, this good? is different, Shirley. This is different. I'll talk about this after your video. So this is different, but this is the concept that they're doing. Right. They're trying to, and then for the homeless, they become tighter. They're not as wide. But go ahead. I just wanted to show this, but keep talking. Keep talking. I'm a, No, no. Oh. Okay, so I'll go back to my last conversation. But this right here, mm -hmm. this is different. This is for people who are like, you know, they're they're coming in from overseas. They don't want to pay a much uh, money for a hotel. They just want a place to stay for maybe a night and do some backpacking or whatever. Um, and I've actually I've actually studied because I was a real estate major in, in, in college. And I actually remember this concept. Uh, one of the person who orig originated this concept was actually from was an alumni from USC. And so it's, it's literally just for like the backpacker, the student backpacker, the study abroad person just coming in for just like no more than a week. It just wants a place to stay. And that's what this is about. It is clean. It's clean and stuff like that. And of course, you're going to have some that are dirty, but it's kind of like an enhancement of what, what you have, like a hostel, like a hostel, those places called hostels or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like an enhancement of that. Um, but the other thing, what I was talking about um, with those pods that they were setting up for the homeless people, I'm just frustrated to the point where I don't know how people on your chat are not like living about this because I'm not about to sit up there and be on hard times being some dang pot like that. I'm sorry. I'm a tearing, I'm tearing something up. Somebody going to be poor because of me, because there's no freaking way we can bail out these bankers who ruin the economy. We sit here, we worked hard, we have college degrees, we make our money and we, and then, you know, because we can't keep up with inflation, we get a, uh, some kind of tr uh, tri-level bunk bed. Nah, I ain't rolling like that. Bump that. <laughs> but here's and the then on but, and then but, on top of that, we're just and then I'm, but I want to stop you. You justifying this. Look at all these strange people that don't know each other who could have yep. one or two of these people could have traveled to China. And guess what? All these people are infected. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to give yep. you another perspective. I showed you the homeless perspective. I'm gonna show you quote unquote the civilized perspective of this new yuppie hippie mindset where you know yep. you in a hotel, you got space. I got space. Yep in the hotel room these people are going in and out of a bunk bed uh, and, and, um and, and and they're sitting in these types of community in very very tight spaces uh this this is how diseases are formed and this is how they're easily spread in a rapid mode go ahead Dimitri. Go ahead. oh absolutely yeah you know. and this is just it's just it's just yeah but i mean i understand this whole concept um it's a little bit too too stuffy for me I, I couldn't be in this kind of a situation, uh, but I understand the concept. I understand yeah. the concept too, but this is what China has been doing. This is what right. these countries have been doing, and people have accepted this lifestyle. Now, we kind of had these concepts with trains. You remember uh, back in the day when you traveled on a train? They still have this right, concept, right. But they never thought that they would come to the point that this is now the way you're of living. This is now the way exactly. Of living. Exactly. There's a difference between taking the train uh, as uh, with the kids to have a, you know, a very a good experience or whatever for two or three, four days versus telling me that, you know, this is where you're going to live as we mess up the economy and raise prices to where we lock you out because you can't afford to pay for five hundred dollars uh, a unit for school. You can't pay, you know, ten thousand dollars for a cheeseburger. Bump all that. Nah, that ain't gonna be me. We're going to be throwing them things. I'm going to just die about this mug. There's, that's not going to be me. So, you know, you have to put your shoes out. You walk in these places. These are hotels. They call themselves hotel. This is in Japan. So this is how they sleep. You see that? You walk in these places. You walk in. These are your lockers. And then you walk in. This is where you sleep. You get a little bitty hole. They're trying to bring this culture of living to America. 
Now, no. what has happened in China is because they live in this kind of quadrum areas where they're all living and sleeping on top of each other. That's how this disease rapidly got across. That's the point of me showing you this. This is not how we live. But see that no. she paid for that. Listen, now she's going to go in. Look, Dimitri, she got a little TV. She crawls in her home and then she locks herself in. Mm. Please. And they go right on in there and they go right on in there and that's where they sleep. And if they got to go to the bathroom, they have to crawl themselves out. <clears throat> They're trying to make this a living in California. And, and see, they, they made those bunk beds a little bigger, but look how tight these are. That's how they start off. They give the illusion that well, you're going to have all that. No, no, no. Hold on. But you also got to consider the people. This per this girl is probably like five, 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 six. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So it might look, it might look a little bit bigger based upon but we also gotta we gotta, we gotta scale it to the video now someone said in the chat who's this who said this uh which is which is true it says um tra uh trajan hercules said but japan is clean and not uh degenerated that is true japan the japanese these are uh, little pod things they are very very clean but still i'm not squeezing into these and also japan this works for japan because remember japan's an island you know they don't have an abundance of land and land space so I can understand this is in Japan based upon the circumstances of the land. And in America, they're trying to engineer this and make America have the same land space as like, for example, Japan, but they're doing this via psychological operations. The, hence the environmental movement, climate change, climate change. Let's not, you know, develop um, housing on open spaces because we have to, because of climate change, climate change. Let me tell you something. As long as we got over 800 bases across the world, don't come up over here telling me about no damn climate change. As long as we keep bombing countries across the world, don't come up over here talking to me no damn climate change. There's nothing that all of us in the chat can do, even if we just let the water run for a week. We cannot damage the environment more than a dang Patriot missile or a bomb from a, a Navy ship or, or killing people who, uh, who are in a country that are, that are on top of, um, I'm sorry, uh, oil wells or whatever. So there's nothing that we can do that's messing up climate change. They're just utilizing that as reasons for not building houses, uh, building, oh, um, opening up land space and building houses. There's so much open land in America. It's crazy, it's true. crazy. That's true. And we're sitting here and we're sitting here confining ourselves to to these little cities. Now, also keep in mind when you have these environmental movements are don't you always notice why these environmental movements are always rich celebrities or rich people? The reason for that is because if you if, if you build more housing, build more houses for people to, that are affordable, their price, their value is going to go down. And so they so, of course, they have an incentive to make sure they don't you know, build more houses because then they can keep their appraised value. And then when they want to sell or open a business or give money to their kids or whatever, they'll be able to pass it down better. And they have to worry about, you know, all these different houses that can sell for less money. So. I, I'm, I'm not into this whole environmental thing. I mean, yes, the climate does change. You know, it changes every day. You got morning, you have night. But the bottom line is that, yes, there could be some things that we can do as a society. But my thing is, don't come to me, individual American, when our body politic is over in every country, stealing resources, bombing. We're still on oil. When we have the technology to get off oil, don't come up over here telling me to do a goddamn thing. I ain't Ooh. doing shit. Now, look, you guys, if we, I think we kind of are used to pot. This is the slave ships. This is how they brought the slaves over. They put us in pods. They had us lay all next to each other. This is how slaves came into America. And when they separated them, they had the women. This is the women's section. This is the boys. And this is the men. This is how, this, this is how they used to bring us in. So pod living is, is not unfamiliar to the colonists and to the Europeans and to the Chinese. They know how to stuff and rack and, and stack us as people. Who's to say now they're going to do this with the black homeless? The new black homeless people are getting put into the same kind of concept. They, these are not pretty looking quarters that you saw. These are nope. pods. They're going to uh, be people come in. They're going to sleep in for the homeless. We're homeless, but the immigrants and the illegals and the Chinese who come here illegally have rights and we don't. Thank, hey, thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Research in the house. Mr. Oh, Research is in the building. Mr. Research has been very patient. I didn't even know you were on the, on the room, but thank God, Mr. Research, uh, give us your thoughts on what we've shown you. Man, I, I just, <laughs> I had 25 minutes of me and my friends laughing when flagship said, where the roundhouse kicks at? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we couldn't even tell anything else y'all said because it's like, what a rap. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, that's wrong. That's wrong, by the way, that's wrong. <laughs> this is what I was warning people about. I mean, you know, the worst thing with us as black folks, and this goes back to the video you made regarding Vicky. We got too many people saying stuff with no solutions behind it. We got too many people talking on the internet but not saying what the next move is. I like how flagship said to that brother, hey, it ain't about that. Bring your receipts, bring your information. And let's go from there. You just got too many people saying stuff. And and what black folks don't understand is the quote unquote coons are going to make it. The quote unquote family people, they going to make it. The quote unquote advanced black men, black women, they going to make it. Everybody else who's doing just enough and look, it's it's about numbers. So if these people have been hiding this from you all the time, I've been mentioning it to you. Shirley done took up the mantle. Then why, why do y'all think they really care about you guys' best interest? We we do too much of this uh carrying what the what what the what the mayonnaise man says as as more important than what we as black first individuals should be focused on. It don't matter what party you in, no matter how, how you live in, you gotta think black first, because at the end of the day, even an African is gonna be betrayed. So it, we, we 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 gotta take this stuff for serious. You did you guys hear about the people in Korea? The uh, a lot of the hospital people are quitting and refusing to work. Oh. oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, South Korea, you got people who have put in resignations at probably like 20, 30% put in resignations and refuse to come back to work. Goodness gracious. I have gracious. not heard about that. Not heard thing, about that. And, and one thing, Mr. Research, uh, Mr. Research wins all debates. I like that name. I, I really like what you said about, you know, people are stating that uh, you know, what's the next solution? And that's one of the, and one of the, a lot of things that ch- people were saying in the chat, like, oh, you're going to trust this, you're going to trust that. And the things you got to bring receipts. Okay, let's ha- I have no problem being wrong. But let's talk about in the context of information and receipts. Like Shirley is doing this show to bring light to what's coming. And, and that's why I was bringing background information about what the CDC says, because that's all we got right now. I mean, even though the CDC has done some, allegedly some shenanigans to black people, but when it comes to something like this, we got to sit there and let's look at the, this institution and their scientists. Let's at least take this information and then from there use as a platform to then go and get more information to make sure that we are we are good to go. Our family's good to go and that we're safe and we can we can we can um, be good uh, during this situation and during this outbreak. Absolutely, flagship, because to do less than what you just said is being anti-black. Right. You got you got to be focused on your people first. Shout out to Deb B. She said, "Why do they refuse to work? Because some of the worker, some of the hospital workers are getting infected." Yep. And 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 once you're infected, it's a waiting game. You know, they 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 going to see whether you clear up because they don't really have a solution. And that and that fog that they putting out is supposed to be like a pre pre something. Mm. To try to dry out, I, I don't even know what they think they're doing with that. Okay. Let, me also, let me also reiterate what the CDC said about the treatment. Make sure that you wash your hands. Make sure you got your, you know, Shirley was Shirley showed us you got to get your ninety-one proof alcohol. You got to get your bleach. You got to also um, the, the CDC said for treatment. Make sure you get over-the-counter pain meds. Also, uh, cold medicines. Make sure you take warm shower, hot showers. Um, and I mean, I, I, I mean, I think I'm kind of pissed that that's all they got at this point in time. But you know what? If that's what they say right now, let's start there. And then there's this other article saying that this country company called Regeneron is actually trying to come out is really close to finding some kind of a uh, is, is coming coming close to finding some kind of cure for this. So um, that's came from the CDC. So just Mr. to give information out there for people. The only thing about these people right now, they're getting pulled out of their apartments and they're kicking and screaming. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, is, this, this is, is, is this is is this a violation of human rights to do this to people? That's my question. Look, king, the 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 king of China, Xi Ping, don't really give give, give a hell. 
Because what you got to understand, he just became emperor for life. So the fact that he doesn't have a handle on this, people are now looking at his leadership like crap. Mm. Yeah. And the first, the first thing he did was blame lower level people. But like I put on my page, General Chen, General Chen is the uh, high ranking uh, virus expert. Why did she go to the super lab in Wuhan to try to figure out what's going on? Somebody screwed up. Yep. So, so you don't, you don't pull her out uh, for nothing. So, so uh, the the fact that they welding these people in and doing all is so that they don't get filmed. It's so that Xi Ping doesn't look bad. So he can say he's handling it. Let them people sit up in there and die. You gotta have you, have you ever been to China? Yes. No. You have. Okay. I have. Okay, flagship. You've been to China. So uh -huh. I try to explain to people. Now you correct me if I'm wrong because I was out there in the '90s. Okay. There's four different types of people. The Hong Kong people are not like nobody else. Ex they're oh my goodness! It's night they're, and day. They're 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 British kind of people. Yep. The people all the way out there in uh on the other side of the uh, big mountain uh where the Olympics was, they're more mm -hmm. country type of people. Hey, you know, yes. people aren't really out there. It's then literally... you got the. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let me just say this. Then then you got the regular country people. Which are made, made most, and then you got the boat people. Let's not forget the boat people. Yes, the people yes. who live on land. These people are expendable. Flagship, tell these people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't, it's literally they don't the care about most. It's literally the difference between somebody that lives in L.A., someone that lives in Appalachia Mountains. And someone that lives literally, um, like uh, uh, what's it called? Um, what's those people called? Uh, those fishermen in Alaska. That's the difference in China. Pretty much, yeah. And and, and so there's a lot of people that are expendable, mm -hmm. and and that's just how it is, man. Right now, he the 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 king. I call I like to call him the king of China because that's what he is. He's he he's trying to show up that. Wait a minute, we didn't start this. Uh uh somebody was eating something. See, see, see right now, notice this. Most of our people, and I've noticed is people of mixed race saying this. White, but they're white with a little ch Chinese to them. They're saying mm -hmm. stuff on American TV. Well, we don't want to race profile people and we don't want to. I mean, what do you want me to do? It's, it's, it's coming out of China. If it was Africa, you would say that. Oh, right. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Right, no, I mean, that's a very valid point where we want to be politically correct and not acknowledge that this is coming from China. And these people have traveled globally and now they've spread their love to every other country and everybody wants to say, oh, that's not right. Well, it's not right, but is that not true? If not what you're saying is true, then what is truth? <laughs> I mean... They're literally welding people in their pro uh, uh, Mr. Research, listen to this. Listen to this section. I want you to hear these people. I know this. If we make it through this, this is going to be some great zombie movies for the next 10 years. I <laughs> do a lot of. Very concerned about these. Go ahead. What were you saying? I said things. They're gonna have a lot of storylines. They're gonna be able to do. Mm -hmm. One this person. Is, this, story. Now, this story. I want you to listen to this one. This lady is saying in this video, you're gonna hear her say, "We don't need to quarantine people. That's unhumane." This is CNN. This is CNN. They don't tell us that we don't need people quarantined. King County, Washington State, has died. This now makes the first coronavirus death confirmed in the U.S. Also, in just a few minutes, President Donald J. Trump oh, will coronavirus from the what? What? The one in Seattle died. Yep. Or, oh, it, not that they, no, oh no, not the one in Seattle. The one in Washington D.C. It was King. It's oh, the okay. epidemic. 
Okay. No, the one I did, this is the first one, and she died um, in Seattle, Washington. Let me fast forward this. Pandemic. Uh, good to see you. So how significant is this now um, that we would learn the first U.S. death of coronavirus still up? This, are, this, this news feed is today. This is today, just to let you know. Unclear whether this person uh, got this virus from community spread or whether this person had recently visited an affected area or had been exposed to someone. What are your thoughts? Well, I think as we see this virus spread in the U.S., we are going to see death. That's really to be expected. I think what is concerning is that there's been so many delays in terms of testing for, for the virus. Um, you know, the FDA has finally come out and said that they're going to be approving uh, local and state health department tests and private tests that have been developed as long as they can provide data that they work. In New York City, for example, uh, we're finally going to be able to do our own testing uh, in New York State. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that's going to be very important to making sure that we appropriately diagnose patients, identify them early and get them the help they need, ideally to prevent these kinds of deaths. You believe it's going to make a significant difference? Well, I think you need to be able to screen and diagnose in order to, one, track the, the, the epidemic. You need to be able to do that to get fully appropriate care. And you need to be able to do that to protect healthcare providers who are caring for those patients. So we have also learned, you know, patients who have contracted the virus Here you know, go. with no known source. Um, clearly, there is a source. It's just unclear uh, how people have been exposed. How do you believe, um, you know, any anyone in the medical community will be able to get to the bottom of how people are being exposed if they haven't been to an affected area abroad? Well, it's a bit like the flu, right? Or the common cold. Are you ever able to definitively say, well, that's how I got the cold that I got last week? You know, that's mm -hmm. that's going to be very difficult. And that's really why the measures that have been used so far, things like quarantine, um, don't really work uh, in the kind oh, of Oh, here we go. What did she just say? Here we go. <laughs> she said quarantine does not really work. So if she doesn't believe in quarantining people. Why? because it's unhumane, it's politically incorrect. You guys need to calm down. People can still go out and touch people. They have yet told anybody to wear gloves, to wash their hands, to wear masks. They don't think the severity is coming to America when these people are flying from their country to our country. Mr. Research, what? I mean, either one of you or Dimitri, what's your take on this? Go ahead, flagship. Oh, oh no, I was just gonna say, remember my analogy earlier. If I'm coughing and I got a cold and I'm sick, out of respect to the people, I'm I'm pretty much gonna stay at home. So it doesn't so it makes total sense if someone has, you know, the coronavirus, they should just stay home. So it's so a quarantine, okay, can you not call that? Well, yeah, let's call it that, and then also stay your ass at home. So that so, so this this is what I'm talking about. This is how smart people are just freaking dumb. Who's this? Who's it? Who is she? Doctor Celine Gounder? Yeah, she needs to. She she needs to take many colonizer seats and have and, sit, and, sh and shut the hell up. If you're gonna come out here and give me some clinical data and some clinical information on how to prevent this and how to you know take care of myself if I do get the coronavirus, so so bid. But if someone has the virus, who the hell do you think you are to say that, that you they should you should be quarantined? That doesn't make any sense. That's and the problem. I remember, and I remember in when uh, when I was a little kid. Um, uh, cause my, cause my, uh, when the HIV virus came out and they was trying to shut down the, the bathhouses and, and all the other establishments and trying to tell people what to do to prevent yourself from getting HIV in San Francisco. Remember how they said they didn't want to quarantine, do anything. And then guess what? The thing spread all over the place. Right. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, and it was just, it was just too late. So, I mean, these people are, these people are smart, but they're freaking idiots. Matter of fact, I saw a movie. Uh, it was a real thing that happened to a group of friends. They laughed about all that. And one by one, you know, they started getting splotches on them and then they started yep. dying. And, and yep. you know, he, he, here's the thing. When it comes to anything, especially when people are telling you we don't have a cure yet. Exactly. And, mm. and on top of that, we're testing, but our test is not necessarily on point because people who ain't even been to China are popping up with it. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember when, and I remember my um, and I remember very distinctly because my um, because my uncle is gay and he actually is alive with AIDS and it's still alive with HIV. But all his friends died in like a year and a half period. Like it was he, he's a, he's a, he's a what's it called a social butterfly. He had a lot of friends. He literally came home, lived with us, and he was just depressed for like two months because all his friends like died in like like eighteen months. It was crazy. And so they were, and this was all around time to come out quarantine and all that kind of stuff. And they didn't, oh, we shouldn't be quarantined. Quarantine, period. Mm. Period. Yeah. We ain't about yeah. to have this. We ain't about to have 2.0. Let, let's hit it one more time, gentlemen. So that's that's going to be very difficult. And that's really why the measures that have been used so far, things like quarantine, um, don't really work uh, in this kind of setting. Because once you have community spread, once you get to the point where you can't really track those chains of transmission, those measures do not work. So at that point, you really have to shift your strategy. And your strategy needs to be about scaling up testing, scaling up treatment, scaling up the ability for physicians to care for these patients. You know, I've heard uh, just this morning, I got an email from somebody in Westchester County who said he had just come back from Milan. Uh, he had flu-like symptoms. He called up his primary care doctor. His doctor said, you know, I, don't come here, go to the hospital. He called the hospital. They weren't very helpful either. Mm. And, you know, that that kind of thing is really concerning. I think providers on the front lines, uh, many of them, if they're not at the top tier hospitals, are not sure what mm. to do. Mm. And as it pertains to this one now reported uh, death, the first in, in the U.S., and then it comes out of King County, Washington. And uh, among the four cases uh, where it had already been reported that it, it was believed that they um, may be victims of a community spread, and we're talking about California, another portion of Washington and Oregon, that this death comes from an area other than these four uh, unknown origin cases. How concerning is that to you? What does that what do you guys think about this? Here we are. I, I did that video earlier with Mr. Research, and I think um, um, uh, Flagship was in the room. You remember when what? I talked about how the Chinese came to California first, and they set up their Chinatown in California first, and the illegals who came here, the Paper Sun people, came to California first, and they moved up to Oregon, and then uh, uh, moved up to Washington State. I mean, what is your take on all of this that they won't shut it down? And this lady just said she had a friend who just flew here, and the doctors are saying, Don't come here. You got into the state <laughs> to fix you. The state doctors are saying, Oh, hell no. Like we, Mr. Research said, we don't know where and how to fix this. And now you're going to bring it to here, and you want me to try to find your answer? Oh, mm -mm, ain't working. Well, 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 number one thing, let me just say this, uh, flagship. The number one thing is, it's mutating quickly. This is the third or fourth mutation since this whole thing started. It's jumping, it's jumping, it's jumping. So that guy in Seattle, King County is in, is uh, is a covers Seattle. Uh, that guy has only been confirmed, what was that, two weeks, maybe three weeks? Mm. It's a good so think about the people that came after, the people that came from China on the plane. And they Hello? I think it's phone. Uh, Mr. Research, your, your phone is breaking up. Well, I was going to say, uh, Shirley, is that I want to kind of go back to what the doctor said when she talked about how one of her friends was coming in, they had some symptoms and, and, and the doctor said, don't come here, go to the hospital. And the hospital said, don't come here. Uh -huh. And, and they correlate that, those comments with, uh, she says there's no need for a quarantine. Okay. One doesn't have nothing to do with the other. Yes, of course, absolutely. The healthcare providers should have, um, the proper equipment, the proper knowledge in order to treat these patients. And yes, they should not be turning away patients because they don't have that, that information. That is absolutely 100% true. But at that same point in time, when someone is identified, there's also at that same junction, nothing wrong with saying, okay, until we get you better or we find out what's going on, you need to go sit, you need to go have a coconut smile up over here in this dang, in this dang situation, period. Oh. Mm. The, and, that, and that's what kind of frustrates me. So what they want to oh. do is just let it go, keep spreading around, just go out there and keep coughing on people, keep sneezing on folks. Oh, don't worry, we're all in this together. It's a melting pot, kumbaya, bump all that. Get your ass up over there and sit the fuck down. Mm. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe it's time to here, get old, even if it, even if it was me. Shout out to Deb B in the chat room. Here's what I mean by mutated. First, when it happened, it was person to person. Second time it happened, it was airborne. The third time it happened now is that the lady isn't even in the same vicinity of a a uh, a uh, person who was uh, quote unquote sick or from China and any anything. That's the Travis Air Force lady. So that's three times things have jumped in what they say in in in, in medical terms, and they don't know why. So those are those are. It's, it's still fading out, Mr. Research. What what is going on with uh Jane Hercules? What's mutations say, anytime, anytime it changes, those are considered mutations. But go ahead. No, I was just wondering what Tre uh Trojan Hercules is talking about because we've been talking about this on the podcast. I mean on the show. Um it says stop acting like people don't know what's going on. Um, is he saying that if we we're just parent we're making people paranoid or something? I don't know what you he's know, talking Hercules about. Is just, Her Hercules is just one of those people who don't want anybody saying anything. If Hercules really has something to say, Hercules will put put some uh, uh, information in there that supersedes ours. You know what? We are willing to not be right. We uh, go go ahead, uh, uh, Hercules. Tell us what's really going on. But 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 Hercules gets a kick uh, off of saying what he don't like hearing that's that's his thing in the chat room but I'm, I'm i'm gonna possibly be wrong let's see if hercules put some information in the chat room when i just i my thing is i just put it on a timeout because the thing is you know people don't want to hear about this they don't have to be on the on the show but the thing is, is that this is a i mean yeah it's over in china now but it can come over here and plus we get our trade from china and all our goods and stuff we get from amazon so you don't know if these people coughed on that stuff we don't know i mean this is just all in the beginning stages it's, we only really started hearing about this in the last two or three weeks and already knowing based upon what the cdc and other sources that it takes two weeks to 30 days to really be in your system we don't know in the next week or next two weeks it might be something bigger it might not be but at least we can just prepare ourselves and just at least have the basic information is nothing wrong with that so no, I absolutely agree with that. And I know there may be people who agree or disagree as sharing this information, but that's the problem. It's the ground roots people who have to share the real truth. Look at that video where the doctors started having conversations with each other privately. They warned their family members and their friends, but they didn't warn the rest of the country. See, yeah. their family members and friends might have moved out of China, said, this is really bad. You need to get out. Get on the plane and get out. How many people right now who got out are out and knew about it way ahead of time before everybody else? Right, That's exactly. All I'm so and remember that. Remember the fish market. They were talking about this in the fish market in December. Mm. Remember they're talking. Remember you showed the video. They was talking about yeah. it, the fish market in December, and then now we're in getting ready. We hit March, and now it's a big situation in China. And now you're talking about it now, and then we got Hercules here saying that we're making everyone paranoid. Okay, so these are the people. So he was one of those guys in December in China tell him, oh, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. OK, so you go ahead and have no big deal. We will have we will, we will tip a 40 in your memory. And we don't see you on the chat no more because we know you got eaten up by the coronavirus and we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> I'm done. Well, you know, I tell you, the real truth of the matter is that if we are not conscious and we're unconscious, we're not going to see another thing. Uh, we're going to see a lot of things happen and a lot of things that we're doing. This is helping us save our people. We need to save the community of people who are conscious and aware. Uh, because like I showed you with that gentleman who wore that mask and these numbers, these numbers are real numbers. These numbers that you see live right now on this website right here, it, these are real numbers and they're live streaming right here. This one right here, um, uh, Roy Lab. They are telling you the outbreak and there's other la la live streams talking right now. Uh, in the morning, there'll be more people dead. In the morning, there'll be more people dead. And America is being put in quandrums where we're living together. This is what they're doing to black people. We're living like this downtown LA, LA and it's only a matter of time. Because when it strikes, it's going to be like that cruise ship. It's going to be like that cruise ship. And then what are they going to do? Quarantine the whole city downtown LA because they wouldn't house these people. They don't want to house these kind of people. They want to let them go around and still live in this kind of environment. And like you said, it's worse now. This is films I filmed two years ago. Black people living in cages 
but we continue to let illegal immigrants come over here and have better rights and better living facilities than the people who are born and raised in this country. So my question to you gentlemen, what do we do next? Let's talk about solutions. What are the solutions that we should do? Well, I mean, other than bring awareness of, of what's going on, how, how do we bring solutions to the community other than, hey, buy a mask and buy alcohol? Well, the thing is, <laughs> buy a mask and buy well, no, I'm not, well, well, there are two separate things. There's one thing about the coronavirus that's out there. But then the solution, not just for this, because remember in California, they were very uh, strategic in how they, they developed this homeless issue. Remember in 2000, um, <laughs> In 2007 and 8, they passed these propositions that uh, got rid of rent control and how much you could increase your rent each year. Because remember, before 2007, you only could increase rent by like one percent, and then what? They, then it went from one percent to ten percent, and then they also changed all the rent control laws. Because I know, like the city of uh, you know Santa Monica, West Hollywood, you also have like cities like Covina, Oakland, San Francisco had really strict rent control policies where you couldn't raise the rent based on market and stuff like that with all those things went away and so then you, then what you started having is your rent increasing by 10 percent every year since 2008 and this is the culmination of those bad policies you could be a working person that has your money together oh, and hold on, hold on. you got a lot of great nuggets let's slow down a second there okay you said this is the outcome of bad policy making exactly. and california is the template for the rest of the country to show the world this is bad policy making. So now Absolutely. you've got people who this virus just can't wait to jump on. Yeah. Because once it jumps on them, it's over. The police yep. won't want to go down there. People won't want to go down there. You already had a man who came back, called his doctor, and said, "Don't come here. Don't." Come. The mm -hmm. local doctor said, "We don't know how to fix this. Go, go, uh, go to Kaiser. Go somewhere else." But Joe, don't come here. But yeah. also, but also keep in mind that downtown was gentrified from 2000 to 2010, and it's still being gentrified right now. So you also have high rise, uh, luxury condos that are and townhomes that people buy in downtown. So this is not going to just affect the people who are homeless here. It's going to also affect the uh, the the people that live down there right now. So this is this health issue is not going to be just uh uh with the homeless. It's going to be spread all throughout downtown. And also keep in mind. These people are living in front of businesses in downtown. There's a lot of manufacturing in downtown, like small level manufacturing. Um, and so this is going to be a problem all, all together. And so these 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 Democrats and the liberals who I just uh, who I just cannot stand. I think they are the Antichrist. I despise them with everything in me and I will never vote for a Democrat or liberal ever again in my life. And, and I'm just pissed at myself that I was fooled by their by their alleged keyword alleged uh uh, good heart. When it's not good heart, it's actually gonna it's actually gonna terrorize you. So like it's poison cake, and that's all their policies have done is bring poison cake to our community and then everyone else. And they honestly believe that they're doing great things. And the solution moving forward is that we need to get the right because President Trump's agenda of what do you have his what do you have to lose speech is a phenomenal agenda. If we could just implement it, just implement it. So him doing a one trillion dollar inner city infrastructure project to um to to the black community where he's going to hire you know black contractors and stuff like that that is a great start because our, our we do need new roads new bridges new gas lines sewage lines better schools good schools um community college and trade colleges that's the start and so i think that is a great way just to get things going because it can't be just this big huge plan out of nowhere it has to be we have to start somewhere so yeah and and this is how i created my own spray some people said Lysol, but yeah, this is what you guys need. And you need a proper mask. This is not this is just cut me covering my mouth. It was just me covering my mouth. So you do need a proper mask and you do need proper spray. You can go and buy those smaller sprays. I don't have one here, but like a smaller spray bottle. And you guys know what I'm talking about. And you can put your own alcohol, ladies. You can carry it in your purse. Um, the sanitizers, the wipes. Uh, you can buy those, the little small ones I have in my bag that you sometimes get when you go to trade shows. Uh, uh, refill those. Don't throw those away. Uh, you can buy them from Bed Bath & Beyond, and you can buy those. Um, uh, some, Debbie said the bleach wipes don't work. I, you know, I'm, I'm doing alcohol. I don't know if the bleach wipes work or not, but I know I'm definitely using alcohol. Um, 
spray bottles have a small spray bottle yes that doesn't it doesn't hurt and you can put alcohol in there and um you know again um you say you put a little scent of perfume i use essential oils i'll put a link below where you guys can use certain mm -hmm. essential oils i use peppermint oil uh, eucalyptus um frankincense oils just a couple of drops of oil with your alcohol uh, is good for your respiratory system things of that nature um, also, if you have the bigger spray bottles, you want to spray your car, you want to spray wherever you go. If you do travel in Uber, let me pre-warn you. If you do travel in Uber, uh, that again, it can live on surfaces. It is told that it, it will live on surfaces. Thank you, Mr. Research, for coming in earlier. It, it really means a lot and uh, for sharing your thoughts. But if you do travel in Uber, they do have bed bugs now in uh, Ubers. And uh, you saw that man's video. He said he's not going to do no traveling in no truck, uh, car, uh, some Ubers because uh, it, it's just not safe. And it's the same thing with this disease. Now, one thing that they that I'm seeing, what's his name? El Monte, the eminent, said that they let a cruise ship in port in Baltimore where many people had the flu. And he thinks it's going to be the next wave is going to be on the East Coast. Ooh, mm. Damn. Mm. Damn. No, this, this is no joke. I've got to show you guys this one. Uh, I said bed bugs and um, diseases because, you know, we, we're taking, we ride in these strange people's cars. And now you see this came out four days ago in Dallas. A Lyft and Uber cars treated for bed bugs in Dallas. And that's what because the people are sleeping in their cars. And now you've got bed bugs and Ubers when you hop in and out. These people are not clean. They're having sex and they're doing all kinds of strange things in these, <laughs> these cars. Let me see if I can refresh this so that it comes up again. Um, I straight. did take an Uber when I was at a, a company retreat last week, and I got in the car that did have a little stench to it. Oh, I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, they might be doing some other special things in there as well. I think when we think about Ubers, we think about the leather, leather and the cover seats. You also have to keep in mind a lot of these things have cloth seats. Yep. And uh, these cloth seats, uh, these bugs, you can't see them. See, this bug is on the skin. It's just circling. But, um, yeah, these, this article is real. And I'm not making this up. This is out of Dallas. And I want you guys to um, to realize what's going on. Let me, let me just highlight so we can at least hear part of the story. If you partake in ride-sharing programs like Uber and Lyft, you may run the risk of entering a vehicle that has carried a passenger with a bad luck problem, according to one Dallas-based exterminator. Walmart in Pennsylvania found evidence of attempted bed bug infestation. Police, I probably do five to ten ride-share cars per week. Don Brooks, wow. owner of Doff Don Pest Control, told Dallas news station WFAA, Drivers either see bed bugs, someone complain, or they were suspicious of a customer and just want to make sure. Mm. And uh, here's some more information. A bed bug infestation doesn't always mean a lack of hygiene either. Mm. The bugs can easily crawl from one unsuspecting passenger to another without the owner of the vehicle even noticing, Brooks said. He also noted that bed bugs can live over a year without feeding on blood, so an untreated situation can quickly become disastrous for companies that provide millions of rides per day. Wow, that's really deep. That's really deep. So we have a sanitation and health crisis problem. Brooks Listen. has a job that will make your skin crawl. I have nightmares at night time. Oh, look at this. He runs Doff Don Pest Control and treats bed bug infested homes across Dallas. Oh my God. <sighs> By the time you start seeing them, you've got a bigger problem. Than oh, wow. Than you have any idea. And get this, Brooks can also treat your wheels. I would spray all this area here but lately he says he's been treating more cars where you wouldn't expect to find these little guys i probably do five to ten rideshare cars a week yeah bed bugs and rideshare vehicles not a great combo but it's not crazy to think a lot of customers get picked up every day in those cars it could be just one of them that just crawled off of someone a small study last year by insurance company net quote even found rideshare cars are 35,000 times more germy than a toilet seat oh the drivers brooks has met they either seen oh, a small one or someone complained or 
they don't know and they just want to make sure brooks often puts cars needing to be treated into a tent and then turns the heat up inside to 150 degrees wow. to kill those little guys uh, there's no better bug than a dead bug or he just sprays the interior of a car which is cheaper i could spray the car in 15 minutes and they can be off. And hey, this story isn't a scare anyone. There are hundreds of thousands of rideshare drivers in the U.S., and they're required to keep their cars clean. But if you see one, that's not. It's not a matter of if. It's, I think it's a matter of when they're going to get them. In Dallas, I'm Matt Howard. Wow. You know, family, I, I share this information to tell you that we are living in times. We've got a lot of people who are just not clean in this country. And we know, no, no offense, no tea to no shade, but we got a lot of foreigners who are driving these cars, driving these uh, vehicles. And what they consider the level of cleanliness is different than our level. What, what's, your what's your thought on this flagship? I mean, it, it just goes to it just goes to what I was saying earlier. All this stuff is being set up with just bad policy. We have all these people that are in, in politics that 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 use the role to good intentions, and all they do is just make matters worse. Like I was saying earlier, these laws that they took away all the rent control laws and and um uh, the rent control laws as well as the amount of uh, the percentage that you can raise rent each month in California. And then they're, and they pass these laws and they sit there and say, Oh, we don't know why people can't afford rent. Well, you do know why you, you can't afford rent. In addition, we had all these propositions from 2002 all the way up until last year that was supposed to solve the homeless problem. Where's all that money going? It's going to be tr hundreds of trillions of dollars by now. Where's that money going? Cause I don't see any new high rises for, for the homeless uh -uh. and I see the homeless problem rising. So something, something's not jiving here. And so I'm thinking, I, I'm hoping that the, the Justice Department would kind of do an audit of California to see where all this money was going. Because if we passed laws to go towards certain issues in, in, in the state and it went somewhere else, that's, a, that's fraud. Someone needs to go to jail. And it just does, this, this, this whole situation just does not make any sense. Well, it, it, it doesn't. But so I'm like, you, where is this money going? What do we do? What, what, exactly. What is the solution other than just keeping ourselves clean? being conscious of environments and of people who are exposing themselves and just, you know, keep yourself covered. Don't allow yourself to be exposed to people who you may question. If you see someone sick, you might walk a little bit away a, a different route, but whatever you have to do, you guys have to keep your spray bottles. You have to keep your hand sanitizers in your purse or in your wallet and watch these growing numbers. These growing numbers that are live online are very crucial because the longer you sleep at the well and not make yourself a walk of what's happened, it can catch you off guard. And that's why we do these videos because we don't want you caught off guard. Please follow these live feeds. This is just one of them. You can type in coronavirus live stream. And let me show you, for example, there's different ones all over. The numbers are pretty much consistent, but you can type in live stream, um, a world maps, and they will pop up like that. Here's another one that's a little different. And it's telling you the same way the numbers are and how they look. Um, and these numbers, are, uh, they're showing you. Something just moved just now as we were watching that video. Um, as, it's this live stream. It's telling you. It's, it's growing all across the country. Oh, they're showing you parts of what part of the country uh, that it's in. It's one part of the country they're in. Wow. They've got more countries on here than that <laughs> other one had. Look at there. Look at those numbers. Goodness gracious. We are really interactive with one another. And, and I think that as we look at the death toll of people growing, um, we have to put our, our spidey senses up, as one would say, and these political correct Democrats and uh, bureaucracy that they want to continue to promote in this country has to end. And someone has to be the adult in the room. Someone needs to put their foot down and say, okay, this is enough. And I want to show you one more thing uh, I, I showed um, a while back. Let's see um, if I can find it. Just real quick, you guys bear with me. Um, travel. I don't know if this is travel. Um, I want to say travel to um, from China. China to America. How did I find that? They are flying from other parts of, um, of the U.S. They're flying from other parts of, of different countries to get here. They're flying from other places to be able to get into this country. And that's a problem. That's and we allow them saying, oh, no, no, we don't have them here. And I showed you in that video before where people are traveling from different countries. If you were to just book a, a flight, 
uh, to, let's say, Los Angeles. These pills is crazy. This is really ridiculous at this point. And the flights are cheap. Right now, you can fly from China uh, to Los Angeles at $34. I mean, three, um, $345. I mean, these, these flights are cheap. They got cheap flights all over right now. Okay? So if you if you want to go from China to uh, America, there you go. And if you don't do it from China, it? Um, if you, they're not letting you in America that way. What I've been doing, hold on. What I did was this. Let's see if this thing will come up. I went in from, let's say, China. Let's go, just pick any one, and let's go to uh, Mexico. Okay, so we're going to go to Mexico City. Okay, so they're allowing you to do that. So you can go from China to Mexico City. Okay, so now I booked a flight from China to Mexico City. And I want you to see how they're still able to come. China to Mexico City, okay? So when you go to Mexico, guess what? Mexico can still come here. They can still come here, okay? Here's an example. Let me blow this up. You go from China or Korea to LA. You have a 13-hour layover. And then you can go straight on. But guess what? They're going to get off that plane. They're going to get off that plane. They're not going to keep going. They're going to get off that plane. That's the purpose I want you to understand. If you can't figure, if you want to figure out how to get over here, that is exactly what they're doing. That thing kicked me out. Um, they are flying from their country to Mexico. And then from Mexico, you guys can practice this on your own. And you'll see what I'm saying. Is I'm, I'm not making up stories. I showed it last time. I was trying to find that site. But um, this one is using, that's Korea. This is Korea. That's a symbol for Korea. Uh, but they are flying from Korea and other countries they can get into, and they're doing hopscotch. Okay, I can't go directly into America, but I can go another route. I can go another route. I, I, I can't go directly into uh, LAX or New York, but I can go another route. I can find another way of getting in. And if I find another way to get in, well, they're good for me because that works out better for me. And I can get my family to my family in America. Now, I have a friend who told me that he was quarantined for five hours, but now we're being told there's no flights that route. But we are being told that what they're doing is that they're being uh, held in detention for five hours. Okay, here's the one I hear. Here's one, here's Priceline. Okay, here's, here's one on Priceline. Um, they went from China. This is China. You see that right there? You guys see that? That's China to Mexico. This is the LAX. How long is that layover, Dimitri? Can you read that? Let me see. Uh, oh, 14. Oh, wow. So 14 hours. They start and they depart from China. Then they, then they got a layover here in Taiwan for an hour and 45 minutes. Then they go to LAX for 14 hours and 34 minutes. And then they end up in Mexico. If I'm trying to get to the U.S., what am I going to do? I'm going to get off the plane and what? I'm yep. going to stop and get off and stop. Yep. This is their way of coming here. So when they say, oh, they're not coming here. Well, why are they still allowing layovers in America? There should be no layovers in America. Well, hold up. Ruben, Ruben Victor said that Trump closed the border to Mexico and Canada. Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. He, he might have done that. That would be great. Here's another one departing. Departing on Sunday, tomorrow. You can leave China right now. And you can get a layover in Taiwan, another layover for 14 hours in Los Angeles, and then you get off. You don't go to Mexico. This is this is this is how they're, they're talking about they're not letting people in. This is China. You see that? China. Okay. It's another part of China. All you have to do is say it's this China. Another part of China. I want to come to Mexico. They'll pay three thousand dollars. It ain't cheap. But doggone it, I need to save my life. But so, but whatever I need to do, I'm gonna get my ass out of that country. But I'm just telling you, uh, Los Angeles. If you're in Los Angeles, we're in trouble. If you're in Los Angeles, we're in trouble because we're the layover for these people. Again, like I told you, they're leaving their country. They're in, in Taiwan. This is a pattern, 
And they said 14. And I, now, let, if they're holding them, my understanding is that they're quarantining people for five hours, right? If they're quarantining you for five hours, uh, they can't keep you quarantined for 14 hours. I don't believe they're doing it. I think they're letting them walk around the airport and get some air. Okay, you're clean. You're good. Uh, you can go ahead and walk around and now you can get back on the plane. I bet you you check them planes. Half them planes ain't getting full when they get back to Mexico. They're not monitoring those people. This is this is a problem. Dimitri, what's your thought on that? Am I thinking right or am I just kind of hypothetically pushing the envelope here? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I was uh, researching the claim that Ruben Victor said about Trump closing the border of Canada and Mexico. And apparently that is untrue. Mm. He, he did not close the border for Mexico and um, in Canada. This is according to the Washington Post. This is also according to um, BBC News and USA Today. Okay. But he's considering it, though. But I think what happened was that he was getting a lot of pushback. But here's the thing. Let me tell you something. I'm so done with all this pushback, pushback. I guarantee you if it was Shamaka, Aisha, and Umfumbe giving this <laughs> disease out, I guarantee you every single solitary Black neighborhood would be quarantined. This place would be masked the hell up. There'll be like freaking bleach sprays all from, from, from helicopters and airplanes all over the black community. But now it's, you know, it's their precious, their precious, you know, Maria Conchita is all of a sudden they want to sit there and be all like brand new. Oh, we can't do that. We got to be nice. Man, bump all that. Okay, so I wanted to show you, let's say you stayed on the plane. You went from China to Taiwan to the USA and you got off the plane in Mexico. Guess what Mexico is allowing to, to do? They're allowing to be flown into Los Angeles. Oh, no. Nah. You see that? I ain't making this up. Look, nonstop right now. You can fly in for, on Priceline. I just showed you how you can get into the U.S. Shout out to the Chinese people who want to keep infecting everybody. That's how you get into the U.S. and, and circumvent America. That's a shame. We need to shut the borders down. Now, Carolyn Harvey said something that I read, too, is that in Korea, they're just killing you on the spot. They're not. There's no treatment. There's no uh, snatching you up and putting you in a van. It's just like, bam, done. Mm. Mm. And that's exactly what they do in the in the hair salons when they think you're stealing something. They're trying to shoot you and trying to drop kick you and stuff like that. So. We can't, these these cultures, we can't be dealing with these people because uh, we'll be caught up in jail or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the reality is, where is the real solution? Because if we had a real solution, we would see these numbers go down. But obviously, these numbers are going up. And they're saying people are getting better, but they have not told us how they're getting better. They've not even said that they have a virus. Uh, uh, they have a, a cure. They don't have a cure for it. They say, hey, we got a serum. We have something here. That's working. We just say we just see numbers of them stating to us that people are getting better. How are they getting better? We don't know. Because they're making it seem like it's of natural causes. And here we have it where people have to wash their hands. They have to use alcohol. They have to take showers. Um, I used to love to go to the Korean spa. I ain't going to no Korean spa. I used to love to sit in the hot saunas. I can't sit in the hot saunas. Mm -mm. Yeah, these small. And, re and remember, they remember the CD. Remember, I read the stuff in the CDC. They just told you to take cold medicine, pain medicine, take a warm shower, and uh, and get some rest and drink fluids. That's what they. That's the same remedy for the flu. So, I mean, that's from the CDC. So that like literally, there's something. I don't know. There's something missing here. I, I just, I just, I don't know. There's something missing. I'm not getting the right information because it just doesn't make any sense that. Um. It just doesn't make any sense that the same remedies for the common cold and flu is the same remedies for something that's supposed to be the coronavirus. That just does not make sense. You know, and, and I have to agree with you. I th but I think you have to provide the people with something. And that might be why they're saying that. We got to provide them with something. Okay, okay. So it's like just a pacifying to, situation. Right, right. Just to keep people calm. You, got, you can't say, well, what do I do? Well, don't do anything. You know, again, they're not as clean as we are. I'm not trying to be mean because they're going to say I'm racist. I'm not a racist person. I'm a realist. So when you say Shirley, say realist. You should be one too. You should be one too. Um, the, the, obviously, because they got the, that thing looked like a salamander, whatever that little animal was, they say walking around that market. That was normal for them. We don't let animals, strange uh, wildlife roam around our meat in our meat markets. 
Hell, we were already mad when somebody's got their dog walking it around the meat market, an open space meat market where meat is open like that. That is some crazy madness. That is some crazy madness. So, the, so then my question to the to the chat room and to the family, if we are not going to be honest with each other, then who are we honest with? Because when the reality comes out there, when the when the people come out and they say, uh, nobody told us, the black community are saying, hey, nobody brought this to our attention. To the, to the conservative community, no one brought this to our attention. Don't say that we didn't, because we did. Don't get caught up all in the hoopla and, and the fact that Joe Biden won South Carolina, which is not great, but whatever. Um, we still got, uh, they, they, the Democrats are just uh, disarrayed anyway. I don't know if Joe Biden's gonna win or uh, Bernie Sanders, but either way, they don't have a contender to deal with Trump. Trump needs to really show his authority and say, look, if these numbers continue to grow and we're learning that these people are being flown in from China and they are expanding or uh, spreading their love of this virus to the community of America, we need to shut all this down. The borders as well as the planes coming from other countries via China because they know how these people hopscotch. They hopscotch. And just like when they know, okay, you were on that flight, you were on that plane, you got to show your ID, the real ID is out there. And the real ID is going to come into play. And you watch by October, if you do not have the real ID, you will not be able to fly. You will not be able to fly. That is a real situation and a, ser a real serious situation. Uh, what's, your, what's your thought, Dimitri? Dimitri's quiet here. I want to show you one more thing, you guys. I've got to show you because this bothers me so much. It really, really bothers me that we are not conscious that could this happen in America? I'm going to end you on this part of the video where I want you guys to realize that, uh, Dimitri, are you there? there I'm here. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go, go ahead and talk. What are we going to say? No, I'm just saying the real ID, the, uh, the one that has like two pictures on it. Yes. The one, the real ID, you have to have to fly. You have to have that one to fly. Over a passport? Uh, you, either you have to have a passport or the real ID, but you can't go into the federal building without a real ID. That's another thing. Uh, other restrictions other than flying. You can't go into um, uh, uh, um, a federal building and certain things without the real ID. They're just making it harder. So I'm telling everybody, I've said this since last year, go to the DMV. It's a pain in the ass. You need your social security card. If you're a woman and you're married, you need your marriage certificate. Um, you need to have some proof of a local residency bill with you and uh, on your birth certificate. You take all four of those items down there and you show them that. And then you will get this new ID called the real ID. Uh, and that's going to be as of October. If your ID, let's say you have an I regular ID and it doesn't expire to 2024, it doesn't matter. They will not let you on a plane or a federal building Without that, now they're saying that you do, you can carry a passport, but I'm sorry, I'm not carrying my passport when I fly to Texas or Washington, D.C. or Mississippi. That's very rarely I do that. I'll carry my passport when I go out of the country, but I would prefer to have the real ID so that I can uh, deal with the federal issues. Mm, okay. Yeah, so that's what you got. I want to show the people one more time, these people who are welded into their buildings, because that's the topic here. Please get the like buttons up. Please share this video. I really appreciate you sharing it. We at Urban Game Changers, our goal is to educate you and bring awareness of what's going on in the community and how your lives are being affected from a ground level. Yes, there's other people talking about President Trump and the election on the federal issues, but this is this is to heart. This is right next door. We just had Trisha online earlier. She said the man next door to her is the one who died. See, th uh, this tells you that our family is only one degree away. That's amazing, right? Our family is only one degree away from knowing somebody in any of these cases and the shootings and, and, and throughout the state uh, from the diseases to the bed bugs. We're one degree away. We're way many degrees away from, um, from the federal government. But when something like this comes up, your ears need to perk up and you need to pay attention. Videos emerge on social media of authorities using increasingly drastic measures. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, and the argument is about the human rights. Do these people have any human rights? No, they ain't got no human rights. You're just another number. You're another number. This could happen in America. Around China, residents post scenes claiming officials are welding the doors of apartment buildings shut so people can't get out. I'm very concerned about getting this virus. I'm not even 100 metres away from one of the hospitals. It's full. I've seen people entering that hospital. I've seen people getting rolled out on stretchers out of that hospital. It's literally across the road from where I come out of my apartment. Now, that's concerning. My hospitals here are full. Uh, we've run out of medical supplies here. There's no um, PPE or personal protective equipment available anymore. So the doctors are all gone to the bigger hospitals. They're shipping our sick and our, um, you know, the people that are in bad condition. They're taking them to Wuhan. The Wuhan hospitals are also full now. <laughs> By early February, the virus is in 25 countries, with 216 cases outside China. That's this month, this month. The most likely way that the virus is traveling outside of China is by infected people. So these people, they are perhaps in the early stages of the disease and perhaps not showing uh, very many clinical signs. So they are uh, able to uh, get onto planes and they're quite happy to travel. Uh, and in all innocence, they are spreading uh, the, the, the disease as they travel. We think probably 10% or less of all infections in China are being detected at the current time. We estimate that maybe up to you know, 50,000 new infections a day occurring in China. 50,000 new infections occurring in China. Only 10% of them are really uh, contained or noted. Uh, this is some serious issue, people. And as you know, California is the hub of this. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I want you to stay conscious. I want you to stay awoke. And uh, Dimitri, do you have uh, one more last thing you'd like no, to I'm say? No, I'm good. I just want to say thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate you on this video. I really do. I appreciate you adding your your uh, your uh, thoughts and, uh, and your prayers out there. You guys make sure that you subscribe, share this video. Let's have conscious conversations. For every action is a reaction. For every non-action, you could be part of the aftermath of this virus in your own community and your own household. But because you supported this video, please share. Thank you for those who made donations. Please make sure you share this video. Get the like buttons up. We have a lot of people who have been in the chat room. Thank you for Mr. Research and thank you for Flagship for coming on board. You guys add value, you add substance and you bring consciousness in this chat room when you have these conversations. Don't stop now after this video ends. Please leave your comments. And when I do my next video, I like to talk about some of the comments that you're going to leave after the close of this video. I like to know more because by tomorrow, we don't know what's going to happen. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new awakening. But at least we're not sleeping the wheel. We stay woke. Good night, family.